<laughs> yes, good morning. Yeah. How are Stinky's you? Stinky's a guy's name. Yeah, I was going to say a girl named Stinky. That didn't yeah. sound well, Go ahead, so Stinky. What can we do for you? Listen, a friend of mine was at mm. Gary's mother's uh, tax sale last night. Oh, Saturday. really? Yes. Yeah, Gary, Baba Booey, man. He gets into everything. He does. I mean, I said to him, how embarrassing is that? His mom is having a tag sale. Why does he have to be involved? Because his mom involves him, like, you know. <laughs> well, the best part was they kept Gary in the basement. Why? Well, he was down there selling all the garbage in the basement. Wait, you mean you got to walk through the house? Oh, yeah. You go through the whole house. Oh, really? Pick through all his stuff and <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Can you imagine? Let me get this story straight. So his mom's house is open to the public. Yes. It's in the newspaper. Right. And you go down there and, like, you can go up to the bedrooms and stuff? Sure. Walk all over. And you, what do you do? You look at you look at the furniture and everything. Yes. Go through the closet. And you went through Baba Booey's room. No, no. Dude, my can friend I tell you something? Did. What? Hands down. You know, you farted in my face. Hands down, the most humiliating day of my whole life. Oh, absolutely. And get, can I? Think you know what? He, why didn't you just give your mom? How much could she have made? Do you know how much she made? Yeah, that about, day? it's about six hundred bucks. Okay. Oh. Why didn't you give her a thousand bucks and, and tell her not to do it? Because she doesn't. She wouldn't take it. All right. How's this? You send a friend over that she doesn't know with a thousand bucks that I'll take everything. And then get it carted off somewhere. Well, we carted it off the next day, but but she, my mom, like, even when we had stuff that had to go in the dumpster the next day, right. she was still just trying to give stuff away to people. She just, like, she can't bear to, can't bear to see her away. possessions. No, she can't bear to see anything. She thinks, like, if something's in good condition. Like, what did him sell? Throwing it out. Everything. Like what? Yeah, they only made 600 bucks. Dude, yeah. we, I, you, know, you know how big a 30-yard dumpster is? Yeah. It's huge. I mean, it, it took up the entire driveway, and it's about seven or eight feet tall. So you had to suffer all that humiliation for 600 bucks. Right, and then the next day... Was the day, crew covering it? No, no, no. Oh, And then, and then the next day... And then the, Can't we... My mom wanted to lay low. My, Your my, mom wanted to lie? My it? family in general was not hip on the idea of the E-crew covering the tag cell. So. <laughs> but, but what happened was... I think Gary didn't oh, want to cover it. No, no, no. I, the Gary Museum. How yeah. did we pass that? So what'd your, what'd your buddy buy? He bought the uh, Delabate kitchen piece where it's the family of a doghouse that whoever got... I knew that that guy was buying that. Because it was had our names, and I knew it. What was it? You know, in the 60s, they used to have that dopey oh. thing you hung on the wall. It was a doghouse, and there were little dogs, and every family member, you'd write the name on the dog, and then when somebody did something bad, you'd put that dog in the doghouse. Oh, wow. Oh, I never heard of that. It was like, it was like <laughs> this little tchotchke thing. Did your mom ever put people in the doghouse? Oh, yeah, we'd hang it on the wall. So it said, like, it said like Mom, Dad, Gary, oh. Anthony, Stephen. And then, like, if, if you did something bad, you'd take the little dog, and you go, you're in the doghouse. So, so, so you were in a doghouse. <laughs> Well, like, you, would she ever take your dog and put it in the doghouse? Sure, house? if you did something bad. It was, like, it was when you were bad. All right. Scott Einziger, get me a doghouse <laughs> with everyone's name on the show, and I can put them in the doghouse. You, know, you never saw that thing? No. The they were really popular. I want it. They were really popular. Would your buddy sell that to me? I want to hang it on our wall here. I'm, I'm sure we could work something now out. Now you're going to have to pay an you know exorbitant what's the, price. You know what's what the, did he pay for it? Uh, well, this is the funny part. Every time someone will buy something. Okay. <laughs> True. Would, Challenge them a dollar and say, listen, when you see my mother, tell her you paid $20 for right. it. What was this? Well, here's what's going on. I was in the basement, right? right. It's sort of totally humiliating. I'm in the basement. All I want is for this day and this stuff to go away. That's I'm with I you. Want. So I'm selling stuff early in the morning, and then people have to go upstairs because my mom's working the upstairs. Right. And she's going, did you pay for that? And they go in there. She goes, what did you pay for that? And then she's taking stuff back. Right. So I'm, t I'm selling everything. Taking like, it back because she didn't think they paid enough. Right. She's buying oh. it back. Oh, my goodness. She's buying it back from them. Yeah. Like, in other words, if I say, say I sold a vase for a dollar. Right. They'd go upstairs, and, and my mother said, what would you pay for that? And they go, a dollar. My mother would go, no, here's a dollar. No, that's, that's not enough. I'm taking it back. Uh, so oh I was telling people. Oh, my God. The guy says, poor how Gary. Much, how much for this? I go, a dollar. But tell my mom you paid ten. Right. <laughs> I just wanted it out. Oh. Yeah, but did his mother ever add it all up and think she made a lot of money? Yeah, she made no, 600 she, she was. I mean, she made good money, you yeah. know, for her. I bet it wasn't even 600 You probably had to, like, throw no, some no, in. No, no, no. Exactly. It was, it, no, it was, right. we sold a lot of stuff. I mean, we sold a... Um, uh, like we sold like an old chest of drawers for like a hundred bucks. Oh, is that mean? the highest price? Uh... Oh yeah, the, well, the big deal. Of drawers, yeah. The big deal of the day was the uh, was the mostly... break front and the table that went for ninety five combined. I <laughs> was it mostly black people who showed up or white? people? Shockingly not. Really? Shockingly, it was mostly white people. And let really? Me tell you something. Because I know where your mom lives. It's mostly black people. Yeah. Like there was people a... came in. <laughs> yeah. People came from other towns to see all, from all over. <laughs> really? This is what the ad said. The yeah. ad said, "Moving, everything must go." Tag sale one day only, and it just gave the address, no phone number, so we didn't right. have to deal with any phone calls. Right? They came from everywhere. Really? And I bet you they were real disappointed when they came and they showed up, and there was no, no, no. Really? I mean, people, bought, people bought stuff. Like there was this one girl; she was very sweet. Yeah. She's probably around thirty years old. <laughs> she got there at like noon, and she left at like two thirty. I'd rather hang myself with my underwear than go through this. She left at like two thirty, 
and I think her grand total was three dollars. She just like wanted to look through it. People right. just dig that. Right. Wow. People just dig looking through stuff. <laughs> But that, nobody even recognized or knew it was him. No, either. there were a couple of people that did, which was even more embarrassing. Yeah, right. Like, like here's something really embarrassing. Yeah. When I was a boy, I mean, could you like on the radio I and know. people assume you got a lot of money? I gotta help my mom, you know. I know. Like, like, uh, you know what? I would have hired someone to help you, mom. It's, 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 the humiliation is, is just not worth it. It's just, you know, it's this whole Save thing. your wife. Do you yes. Know? Where, where was your wife? Why don't you watch the, the kids? My wife was with the kids. Yeah, so why don't you stay with the kids? Did your, mom, did your wife be there? Because my, it's this whole no one knows thing about my mom and me and i got to do yeah. things. It's, you know, it's a whole guilt thing. i got to help her enough. You know what I've, I've convinced myself? The best thing to do when you hit 18 is to um, disown your parents <laughs> and, and emancipate yourself. I'm not kidding. Like those Hollywood kids, oh, yeah. and never talk to them again. <laughs> it's the only way. Out of my life. <laughs> yeah, everyone. Like, like Howard. Here's a really. That ain't right, man. Here's Why does Gary have to do this? Because I'm, I'm the son that lives he's in New York. The son who lives in New York, and he's got to do. It. And he's he, his brother's out in Texas, and his brother never has to do anything. They're no, he's clear. Well, he oh, come on, man. Too, but he's just not. He's listen. What's he gonna do? Fly in for yeah. tag sale? Yeah, yeah. Let him fly in and do the tag sale. It'll cost him more to fly in than my mother will make. That might. Smarten her up and say, you know, I really don't need to do this. Yeah, like, like this. There was this one guy that recognized me. He was there for like two hours. And he was, was your mom crying and stuff that all her stuff was going. No, that was the next day when when <laughs> the stuff that didn't sell went into the dumpster. And she couldn't handle it. No, she thinks that stuff's we, gold. We were t we, uh, Howard. My friends were cracking up. My mother and I were playing like tug of war with stuff. <laughs> really? Yeah. And she thinks that that stuff is valuable. I guess. Again, you know, she comes from the Depression era. She thinks, like, if it's if there's nothing wrong with it, why would you throw something that's still usable in the garbage? It's not about being cheap, and it's not about thinking it's something valuable. Then why did you donate it to, like, the Salvation yeah. Army? The Salvation Army didn't want it. No, no, here's what happened. <laughs> yeah. Like, even, well, let me let me tell you. When what the Salvation happened. Army does, you know, my dad used to give everything to Salvation Army. He had such crap. That at one point, they said, you know <laughs> oh, what? You know what? They, they stopped coming to my house. That's right. They have exercised quality control now. Yeah. Before they yeah. will take your stuff, they come and inspect right. it now. Well, here was the deal. You used to call them up, and you uh -huh. say, listen, you, first you try to sell old garbage that you had in the house. <laughs> Nobody would buy it. Right. So then you call the Salvation Army and you say to the guy, uh, what do you value this at? Because you can take it off a of tax deduction. And the guy would go, well, it's $5. $5. Give me a receipt. It's seven thousand dollars. That's right. <laughs> you know, they, and the Salvation Army guys are very upfront. They go, uh -huh. "I'm not doing that." That's well, right. And then they don't show up anymore. Here's, here's, well, now they'll come. You know, you call them and they'll say, "All right, we need to come and look yeah. at what you want to give right. away because they've gotten." You know, people use them to haul away their junk. Yeah. Haul away garbage. <laughs> it's, it's funny that you mentioned that too. I have a bunch of leaves from my yard. You guys can give to the homeless. <laughs> they can sleep on them. See, we, were yeah. we were selling stuff on Saturday, and yeah. we didn't sell on Saturday. <laughs> had to go in this dumpster on Sunday because right. I had all my buddies together, right. and it was before. You know, now we're back on the show. We were still on vacation. I was like, I want it. So gone. what'd you end up throwing out that your mom oh. was all bummed out about? Like, actually, so you know, I, my mom's got so much junk in boxes that. I found like um, what about all those Life magazines she saved? Got some guy bought a bunch of those. He did, he did. yeah. And you know what's really funny? The guy's got. What do you pay for those? Well, the guy's got a ton of Life magazines. Right. And my mother, my mom happened to be downstairs at the time. Yeah. And the guy goes, "How much for these?" And I go, "Make me an offer." I was going to tell Pam. Right. He goes, ten cents, ten, ten dollars." <laughs> okay. The guy goes, uh, fifteen. I go, sold. My mother goes, no. And I go, go back upstairs, mom. Please. Yeah, right. Please, please, please. But <laughs> this stuff is is is, is, is price to move. But it, it's worth. Anything only to you. Yeah. The people that come to the tax sale are just as scary. That I mean, stuff laid in your mind for nine million years, and then you didn't want to look far with like, it. Like here's here's something. All this right. woman comes down and she finds this little sewing kit that right. belongs to a sewing machine. Okay. Right. So she goes, "Wow, do you have a sewing machine?" So I go, "You know, I think we do." So I went upstairs. I go, "Mom, what happened to the sewing machine? This is like from the '60s." Right. Yeah, right. 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 And she goes, "Oh, I think it's in the closet." So I go into this 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 room. I go I climb over all her boxes <laughs> she's going with. I pull out the sewing machine, and the woman looks at it. She doesn't want it. Right. Uh, Fine. So the next day, I want I to toss the sewing machine. Your mom now oh, wants it. No, I want that. I go, Mom, you didn't even know you had it. Yeah, <laughs> if, if that woman didn't bring it up, you wouldn't have known you had it. <laughs> I you had it. I need it. I go, but you haven't sewed in 15 years. She my mother has not sewn in 15 years. <laughs> so, so the next day was even more scary. Hey, let's call your mom and I'll torture her. I'll go, no, no, I can't no, believe no, no, you no. gave away the sewing machine. No. You threw that in a dump. You know what that stuff's worth? No, she kept the sewing machine. I couldn't get it away from her. Oh, really? What, what did she throw away? I gotta call your mother. I gotta call your mom. No, here's I gotta what, torture her. No, no. I got it. Here's what happened. I love to the torturing depression. No, no, no. no she, can't, she can't handle it. What's the, what's the greatest thing that you threw away that she thought was valuable? Well, well here's what happened. Go ahead. She had, like, furniture, right? Right, right, right. And she thought she was gonna sell some of the furniture, and it wasn't in horrible condition, but it wasn't new by any... Right. Condition. Oh, if you would have been there, you would have missed a huge fight I got into with two Haitians as well. Yeah, right. A huge argument. Almost right. turned into a fist fight. Right, why? They bought these kitchen chairs, right, which are in pretty good condition, relatively new. The chairs are worth like seventy-five bucks a piece. Mm. Sold them for ten bucks a piece.
there's a screw missing. I said, oh. you know what you do? You go to a hardware store and you buy a screw. So she starts hassling me. And I go, lady, they're $75 chairs. They're like three years old. They're in brand new condition. You got it for 10 bucks a piece. I go, if you want brand new furniture, go to Old Country Road and go buy brand new furniture. Yeah, right. So she starts yelling at me. I do not come to your house to steal. You call me thief. And I go, I'm not calling you a thief. So I took 40 bucks out of my wallet. I put it on the table. I go, bring the chairs in and leave. Right. So her husband walks in and she starts screaming at, this man told me, get out of my house. Oh, oh my God. He starts yelling at me. Then I explain to him what happened. Then he tells her to calm down. Then she starts yelling at him. Right. They leave. Right. And they, they, what argue from, the chairs? they argue from the house for half an hour and then they leave. And did they ever they buy the chairs? They took the chairs. The chairs were already in their car. Oh, they took the chairs. Yeah, but there was, they were screaming at each other. She was screaming at him that he <laughs> let like? me treat her like crap. That's right. He didn't support her. Right. Yeah. <laughs> While she had her insane oh, fit. Oh, dear. So the next day. Sounds like a wild day, man. So the next day, you know, now I got to get rid of this stuff. I got. I just think that was your day off. Yeah. My, my vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So on the third day for the closing. Right. So uh, so we got this furniture. My mom goes, I want to give it to the Salvation Army. And I said, what do you care, Mom? Let's just throw it in the garbage. Right. Goes, I can get um, the tax write-off. I go, you don't even make enough money to pay taxes. Right. So then a friend says, why don't you put it in Gary's name? <laughs> yeah. And I go, you know what? I don't need the tax break. I'd rather get just get it out. Yeah, just throw it out. So you know my buddy Frank, Big yeah. Frank? You know, big Frank, Frank yeah. Big guy. I know Big Frank, yeah. So, and, and he does, he does like demolition for a living. Right. So, you know... I'm trying to, like, ease my mom into it. Frank, take, we take these couches outside. And, you know, he knows how to load a dumpster. You don't just throw stuff in. Right. He starts jumping up and down on them and breaking them apart, twisting off the ends and oh, everything. Right, right, right. Oh. My mother was going to have a heart attack. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. He's, you know, Your mom's a piece of work. We took, we took out, like, bookshelves. And he's out there, and he's, like, whacking them with a sledgehammer, <laughs> jumping off. <laughs> Your mom thinks it's he gold. He has watch all this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In fact, we were throwing away a lot of glassware, yeah. and I kept telling my other friends, I was like, my friends were having so much fun, like, throwing them in the bucket, <laughs> breaking yeah, them. Right, right. Going, just put them in gently. Yeah, I don't right, want right. to hear the crashing sound. Yeah, and they think you're nuts. Well, no, no, I mean, it's tough. I mean, it's her house. They know your mom. All right. You're breaking up her stuff. <laughs> How many houses have we left? So, wait a second. So, here's the best part. Yeah. People come on Saturday, and I'm telling everybody, you know, they go, well, you, are you doing the sale tomorrow? I go, everything goes today. Whatever doesn't sell today is going in the dumpster tomorrow. So, this woman sort of jokingly asked, hey, I'll just pick through the can dumpster. We, can we come pick through the dumpster tomorrow? So, I, I sort of laugh and say, yeah. My buddies and I are spending all day, <laughs> and all of a sudden, we hear, like, this rustling in the dumpster, and it's these two ladies. <laughs> So every time we come out... Boy, are they cheap. They couldn't just pay a couple of bucks. Every time we come out, Frank goes, You better get out of the dumpster. I'm loading in. And he just, like, throws stuff in the dumpster. Oh, you know, man. Hurry out. Man, people are... Can you are, imagine? A bunch of pack rats. And they hauled a bunch you of stuff. you got to get your mom on the phone. They hauled a bunch of stuff. Them? Oh, they had I'm a I'm going to talk to your mom. I'm going to say, You sold those, Time mag those Life magazines for 15 oh. bucks? Are you crazy? Do you know what that stuff's worth? Do you know which magazines they work? As we could say, we saw the guy out on the street the other day selling them. Oh, I want to talk to your mom. I, I really no, got no, I got to. I got to torture her. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Oh, oh, you know, I do anything for the show, but I know. But she's fragile. Oh, please, John, get her on the phone. He doesn't know the number. No, oh, okay. But but like like for instance, right? Like the Life magazine. Like I've been to a flea market. I've seen a guy who has every Life magazine in like a plastic wrapper right. with yeah. a date on it. Yeah. So, okay, if you can find that guy, maybe they're valuable to him. But yeah. everything... That guy ain't there. Right. There's one guy who handed me his card. He's like, listen, I buy watches, I buy gold, I buy lighters. You know, give me a call. Yeah. And then people come in and like... Meanwhile, there's nothing there that he wants. Yeah. Everyone's got their own little thing. One guy walks in and goes, you got toy trains? I'm like, no, he leaves. One guy walks in and goes, you got power tools? No, he's gone. Right, Everyone they have specialties. Yeah, but get the specialties. So, dude, your buddy went over there, and what do you do? Just walk through Gary's house a bunch? Just walk through the base, and he actually found a... A folder with a sixth grade picture of Gary in it. I took it back. I, I, Gary wouldn't sell to me. Yeah, <laughs> Why not, I, man? I, I wanted it. I knew that the guy, I knew oh. that the guy wanted it because it was me, but I also, it was my sixth grade class photo, so I just wanted to have it. Was it <laughs> Sarah, but you didn't know you had it, it before. It for a dime. No, I, there's a lot of things that I could never so find. So what did your buddy buy? What did he buy? He bought the doghouse and a couple of little things. <laughs> But you the know, doghouse thing is very cool. How do you know what one woman bought that was so bizarre? When I was in Boy Scouts, yeah, right? Yeah. My mom got like a cork board. Right. And I got a certificate for like graduating Boy Scouts and then all my merit badges mm. and like uh, all my certificates and everything on this cork board. It had my yeah. name on it. Right. So some guy that knows the show, he found it. He goes, Gary, you know, you're not going to want to sell this. I go, please, I, I, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> so I put it down and he goes, I can't believe you're not sentimental. Two minutes later, some lady who has no idea what's going on, she goes, how much for that? I go, dollars. She, she bought it. And she bought your Boy Scout yeah, cork board? Yeah, Boy Scout cork board. You know what? You undervalued these things. What do you, why do you think she bought it? I have no idea. You, you could tell that this woman didn't know the show. She's like a black lady. She spoke with an accent. She definitely didn't recognize me. <laughs> just, maybe she, I don't know what she <laughs> wanted. thought it was art. Yeah. I thought it was art. It was beautiful. <laughs> And then, and then the other thing is, got an original dollar yeah. And the other thing is, people are so weird. They'll walk through a house, they'll see a million things. You know, we have the house open to anybody. Right.
So some guy goes back to the laundry room, yeah. and he comes out with all detergent. He goes, how much for this? I go, no, we got to wash clothes. <laughs> he thinks that's for sale. Yeah. Oh. Get everything. My how weird. Because I sold um, the floor wax. Some old guy came, and how much did I go? A buck for the floor wax. And you mean she wanted the floor well, wax? Well, she was going to wax the floor before she left, but I didn't know. Why oh. would she do that? She's leaving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a tough day, man. I bet. Hey, that's cool. Hey, if you got that Delabate doghouse, I'd like to get in on that. Uh, I would definitely. certainly love to see it. Yeah, me too. If your friend can bring it down. All, All right. right. Was, Thanks. How are you? Number was... of the Quebec. All right, dude. Hold on. You got it. All right. There was a guy there that was a fan of the show that was actually pretty nice. He spent like three hours and a half looking through stuff. Yeah. And he kept coming to me. He goes, geez, I think you're going to want these. He found like a briefcase of like family photos. Yeah. I was like, I don't want those floating around. <laughs> you know, and, and the guy kept going. You know, He kept finding like my old Thank report cards. Yeah, right. And he was actually nice enough not to buy them. Yeah, cool. His old, we should have gone to this taxi. Oh, I know. God. We, we should have been there. We had the sixth grade picture, the married bed. I want the doghouse. report cards. Now you're going to see, I have to, I'm going to have to pop for 150 <laughs> bucks at least Absolutely. for that thing. Hey, here's your mom. Oh, it is? Yeah. Hey, Mrs. Delabate. Yes. I, I'm sorry I missed the tag sale. I would have come uh, down there. Fun. Hey, can I tell you something? Yeah, pardon? Can I just be honest about something? Yeah, go ahead. So Gary's telling me about the tag sale. We're having a good time getting around. But, you know, Gary always told me you collected uh, Life magazines. Yes. And I said, do you realize but an original Life magazine, were they in good condition? Yeah, I yeah. would say. Yeah, they I really said, drew up. I said, you know, when the, li the original Life magazine, I know a guy who's a collector. Yes. Each yes. issue can sell for hundreds of dollars. Really? Yes. And oh, I cannot oh, believe this, it will... This breaks my heart. What? That, that was given away for 15. 15? Oh, yeah. 1,500? 1,500? 1,500? No, $15. What? You allowed that? No, I, I, it broke my heart. How do you sleep at night knowing no, that, that stuff is worth thousands of dollars? You know what I was upset about? You should have had me down there. I, I, Gary doesn't know how to negotiate. It would have been great. Yeah. Well, you know what upset me? That what? the next day they do furniture out that was oh. in good condition oh. all right wait that they could have put at the curb and people that needed you know poor people could use come it. along and take it what about I didn't those want to sell it why, but I that felt it. why do you allow this because i'll tell you why, wait, why? i'm a product of the depression no you're right i, I agree why. with you never yes. mind the depression gary has no right to take that stuff and throw <laughs> right. it, and throw it, it because because my God. first of all it's I your stuff you know why yeah. he didn't have a poor day in his whole life exactly you provided too huh. much for him right. uh -huh. right. now you've hit on it hey can i say something else can i say something else when Frank was breaking up the furniture, yeah. I heard the whole story. Do you know there were two lovely women trying to go through the dumpster? I told them to go through it. Yes. I and said, go through it and take it because I can't see him throwing it. But Frank and Gary yeah, the, scared the, the, them the, away. They scared them away. Yeah, oh, I know. They were very mean. They were mean. You, you know how it They were good. Can they I did a lot of work, but they were mean. Can I but the life mean? magazines could have been your ticket to a, a healthy retirement. Right, exactly. Oh, I would have retired for the rest of my life. It's an outrage. Lived in luxury. Can I tell you one incident that was strange? Yes. Now, your parents, right? Your parents are like about my parents. Would you say that your mom and dad are a little bit on the superstitious side? Um, yeah, I yeah. guess so. Okay. They broke a mirror. Oh, we broke a mirror. Oh, they're not like oh, that, she no. was so angry. Oh, really? She was yeah. so mad. She, like, and you know what? I, and you had a lot of 60s furniture. And then I, I had an accident the next... The, the, the oh, come on, day, come on. Right? You're not going to... Oh. She had a car oh, accident. Oh, yes. You yes. blame that on the I mirror? The mirror. You, you're you telling me Gary broke the mirror oh. and you had an accident? Well, yes. An automobile accident. Oh, no. Nice going, Gary. I believe in it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really do. And another thing is that, uh, you know, they would just, uh, my bake teacher came along, yeah. and I gave him my bedroom set. And Gary's I, holding his head while his mom's <laughs> talking. It's the funniest thing. All right? Yeah. And what happened, Mom? And what happened? I gave, I gave her the bedroom set. And uh, a, a bureau. My mom gave her, her bake teacher a ton of furniture. The lady okay. came over with her son. Well, you're right. With a van. You know, hey, Mrs. Yeah. Delabate, no, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. A okay. lot of this furniture was from the 1960s, right? Yeah, I would say. You know, since the movie Austin Powers, the 60s furniture is considered retro and is worth a fortune. Right. It there depends. There stores opening up selling that furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Any of Gary's yeah. baby teeth? I didn't mind that they threw the stuff in the dumpster, but leave it at the curb. Of course. Yeah, good stuff. But, Mom, let me ask you a question. Well, if we, first of all, if you had somebody marketing this stuff as retro, yeah. they would have made uh, thousands you of dollars. You talked about this. You only talked to Gary? Yeah. Well, that, uh, now you see why I yell at him. <laughs> 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 now you understand. You don't know how I go on to say Yes, go ahead. Like my mom was like, leave the stuff at the curb for people to take. Right. But I'm like, if people don't take it, I gotta come back and, and what did you do? No, and and the dumpster's gone. Friends if you didn't pickup. break that mirror, no. your mom wouldn't have had a car accident. I'm sorry. You ha I, I, Frank broke it. Wasn't me. Right. Yeah. Well, Frank's fault. Frank. 
they they did they worked they worked they really did. All right, Mrs. Delabate, Thank congratulations you. on the Jeep. The six hundred dollars Gary right, managed to negotiate. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me. This is the worst part of the whole day. So at the end of the day, you know, my mom sees that we're making all this money and everything. Yeah. And they delivered the dumpster at like ten thirty in the morning, and I cut a deal with the guy where I, you know, I gave him, I, I paid cash for the dumpster. Right. So my mom says, "How do we do?" You know, we're all exhausted. We're, you know, I got all the money. I pulled all together. I said, "I got good news and I got bad news." And right. Goes, What's the good news? I said. Well, we made five hundred eighty dollars. She goes, "What's the bad news?" I said, "The dumpster was five fifty. <laughs> 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 we didn't make any money, yeah. but I got rid of the stuff. And thirty right. bucks was the ad, the thirty bucks was for the ad. So oh, I, treat, no. I treated <laughs> I treated for pizza that day. I gave her another twenty. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, another uh, another gentleman wanted bought my. Uh, he said, "Do you have any gold?" So I says to him, the only gold teeth I have are in my teeth, and you're not getting it. Right. You're not until you're dead. Yeah, right. Guy, how exactly. It, this guy's in the house. Hey, what happened to all your religious statues? Because you oh, used to keep religious. Gone. You used to they keep. Were gone? You used to keep religious statues in the yeah, bedroom. I did. I gave it to my neighbor across the street. Oh, okay. They brought many good I years. I give something away. I don't really right. need the money. It was ma mainly that people, you know. Well, I'll tell you something. Go ahead. The religious statues I would have thought you would have saved. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? that I gave to my did, did you at least save the coins on the bottom, Mom? Yeah. Is the coins, did, the coins from like 1896. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they belong to my grandmother. Oh, it's got to be worse. You put coins on the bottom of the religious statues. Right. Yeah. For good luck. Yeah. Well, uh, isn't it bad luck to give away religious artifacts? No. It isn't? No. No, as long as you give it to someone that's, you know, religious also. I can't believe when you used to make love to Mr. Delabate yeah. that you'd have the religious statues in the room. Jesus. Yeah. Hey, I had a big oil painting of, of Jesus. Jesus. And Mary. My right over the bed. My bed. Oh, my oh, my that's got to kill the mood. Yeah. In, a, in a way, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I thought Jesus was helping me. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine that's you're making love to your What Jesus witnessed? Oh, my God. Jesus right. is watching you fornicate. <laughs> I mean, it's this wrong. It's this wrong. Did you ever cover up the statues on, on some nights? No, no. Really? Not at all. Really? That's really. <laughs> Howard, suffice to say, my mom is going to a better place. Right. And all the people at the Jehovah's Witness Church across the street are going to miss her. Right. Yeah. Why they not? They like me. They, right. they do my uh, walk with right. the snow. Well, they're nice people. Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Delabate. Thank you. Uh, all right. Bye. There she is, Mrs. Delabate, fresh from her tag sale. Oh, and we missed it. We missed it, baby. I love that he picks this to be mad about. Well, wait a second. Artie's allowed to be mad that you said he I'm allowed to be mad back. All right. He, he fucking took shots at me, so I'm allowed to be mad back. Listen. Okay, so why are you... Why, you're not dead to me, guy. Whatever relationship Artie and I had evaporated a long time ago anyway. Why is that? Been, why is that? Been nice to each why other. Why is that, guy? Because I just don't trust you anymore. Okay. <laughs> How am I? How am I, I don't. I don't understand how I ruined Gary's trust. Yeah, we I don't really have don't. Any relationship, really? Well, what do you want us to uh, do, Gary? Really you want to? You want to go get a beer? We, we have very really different we lives. Have anything in common? We have different lives, Gary. I mean, you know, of course. We're, we're, how are we going to hang out besides the show? And you, and you clearly don't really like me anymore. So no, I didn't like what you said yesterday, and I got and very you, pissed and, off about it. I don't think, and I don't. I thought for a long time you don't like me. Artie is saying he doesn't no, like what I, you I said. No, I hated what you said yesterday. I, I don't I not dislike you. Well, why do you, wh how is that because my it's problem? Just, it's not why? Your, why do you think that? Artie, it's not your problem. I didn't say it's your problem. I got it under control. I know how to handle it. Okay. And, you know, like, listen, when it comes to work, and it will work. I would never I would never do anything to jeopardize anything that goes on the show. But for you and I not to talk to each other is not going to change our relationship all that much. All right. Well, who do I call when I lie about being sick? Call me. I'll, I'll accept your lies. Okay, Gary. Because that's work-related. And it'll hurt you again. It'll betray you again. Gary crying on his way to work. <laughs> well, you know, Artie's I, lying again. <laughs> I think everybody spent too much time thinking about you. Okay, good. Well, let's stop then. That would be fantastic. That's all I want. It is so done, buddy. Great. I can't well, wait to hear more about how you booked uh, Richard Lewis in 1982 on the wrap-up show. <laughs> Just some beauty. <laughs> You don't like the wrap-up show. I, I enjoy it very much. I I uh, apparently, he's listening. Uh, oh, Artie's, I do. Artie's, I listen. I listen. Artie's so talented and so funny that no, he's, I didn't he's say above, that. He's above the wrap-up show. That's 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 too low for him. He's too. He's too I go awesome in all the that. time. I go in all the time. Not really. Not anymore. You haven't really been in well, in months. That, that's not so my contract. I go right to do heroin. As soon as I leave here, now <laughs> I have a heroin appointment at a quarter after eleven. I can't do the wrap-up show. Is that the truth or a lie? <laughs> That's a joke. You couldn't tell a fucking difference. Uh, 
much. You, I know, because I'm beneath you. No, because you're horribly unfunny. But I think you're a nice guy. I'm beneath you. No, you're boring and unfunny. You're not beneath me. Was she boring and unfunny in Afghanistan? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Nick DiPaolo and David Tell had a few less minutes on stage. <laughs> wow. Oh, you just heard. Right, let's, 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 you know, that joke, let's just be a little bit honest. Nobody's time was cut into because I was there. You could have gone for fucking days if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, you know, you I know got news for you. I'm mad at you now, and you're hurt by that. But, you know, listen, I, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to piss you off right now because I'm mad at you, all right? But you're so, doing it. Okay, well, that's my goal. That's my goal. Because I felt you, hurt you, by you, what, I felt very hurt by what you're, you're like, you're throwing all these casual statements out that if people are not listening all the time, they're just going to hear, oh, Artie lies about everything. Artie's a liar. That's not true. That is not a true statement. And it aggravated me. And that could, that could hurt me in a lot of ways, personally, professionally. And you just throw it out casually and it pissed me off. So I came in here and, uh, I'm defending myself. By yelling at you. Why would you bother talking to me? Why don't you just Because you're the one who fucking said it. What do you want me to do? But you could have come in and talked to me. Well, oh, it's more fun to fuck with you on the air. What did you say yesterday about about the about when I again. spilled two inches of icy icy? <laughs> I see. That was really. I, I, I'll be brutally honest with you. That was you being like, "Fuck you, clean it up." Yeah, and that's, that, what that, that's there. exactly I what it was. Gonna get clean up that's you exactly what it was. I didn't. Person. I forgot about it. I didn't know about it's it because some fucking underling was standing there. That'll take care of it. That's what you think of. You're me. not an underling to me. You clear. You make more than me. The only one standing there. Who else is going to do it? I don't know. You got to get to the wrap up show. Start the fact, uh, You got to you got to get to the wrap up show by eleven to call me a liar by eleven oh two. I took my tissues and threw them on the floor and told Artie, uh, to uh, I told Gary to pick them up. <laughs> yeah, I know, uh, and that's what he bullshits. Do he, he sits in here yelling at you in the air? No, I was all kidding. Him, though. I picked up my own thing, <laughs> right, Gary? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did, Howard. <laughs> what about when you made him go get your cum rag at your house? That was necessary. He didn't make Artie, me. Artie, here's another one of your lies. He didn't make me. I volunteered to do it. I'm sorry, that was a lie. Any right. man would want to touch my thumb. He trusted me, and I said I would go. Right. He didn't make me do it. No, any man who you'd ask to do that for is making you do it. <laughs> he didn't ask him. <laughs> I didn't no. ask him. He, yeah, I know. <laughs> Gary went to go, you know, do, you know. I mean, is, is there anyone else in the world you'd ask to do that for? <laughs> but he didn't ask me. I know. You were just being a good producer. Well, he said, I got to get rid of the thing, and I said, I'll go take care of it for you. When you had lunch with Rob Burnett, did you ask him if he ever got Dave's jizz rags? I know I haven't had lunch with Rob yet. I thought you had lunch with Rob. Hey, do you know about this? Gary, in an effort to He's prepare. preparing for the future. Oh, my what God. What, what is now happening? What? Why don't you go to a bread line? Oh. The future that we'll have food already lying. I'll be dead. We all know that. <laughs> That's true. I won't only be dead to but Gary. Listen, I'll be, dead to, I'll be no, actually dead. Really dead. <laughs> That's what <laughs> Gary said. You have six months anyway. You might as well be dead to him now. Right. That's nice for Gary to say that. <laughs> the only difference to Gary insulting me and, and me insulting him is when I do it, it's funny. And so people uh, remember it. He tells me I have six months to live. That's fantastic, Gary. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you're be, so you practically write it in your book. I know. How many times in your book do you say, I can't believe I live to be how, what I am now? Well, listen, dude, I don't well, know. I, I, I question my mortality because of how I've lived. I, I agree with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. As mad as you are, Gary, I can tell, uh, you know, I know you guys have differences here and there now. But Gary is so upset about you oh. because he loves you so much. Now, yeah, you're never well, going to get that. But maybe, I'm maybe, you. Well, maybe I'm upset because Gary, look, a lot of people said shit in that room. Yes. And uh, a lot of people make accusations. Of course, Will is right. I don't care about him. Right. But uh, <laughs> uh, Gary, I do. Of course, the guy, it hurts more with Gary. Gary Gary's the major reason I'm sitting here. He's a big part of my career. And he means a lot to me. His opinion means a lot to me. At some point, Gary, I think he got in his head that for some reason I don't like him or whatever. And he projects that on me. And, and he, it eats away at him. And I think Gary changed our relationship in his head. So every time Gary says something like that, like I'm a liar, I go, you know, I heard that in the car yesterday. And I'm going, God, does Gary really fucking think I'm just a blanket liar about everything? That hurts. It does. I think he thinks anything drug related is a lie. Well, listen, no, that's, he was that's saying a good, everything. I mean, that's right. what, what Artie is objecting yeah, right. I mean, I don't look, I'll admit to that. There's been times where I did heroin and I said, no, I didn't do heroin. <laughs> There's been times I 
was pulled over speeding by a cop, and I said, really? Was I doing 80? <laughs> <laughs> I so, mean, that's, you know what, what, that's what happens. That's life. You lie about shit. You're, you're right in Gary's case, and Artie's right in his case. He's uh, so angry at Gary because it matters to him. You don't get angry about people that don't matter to right. you. Right. That's right. It, it, hurt, it hurt me a, a lot to, to hear him say that. I don't care. You know, everyone else in that room is, first of all. Is this the makeup the, phase? Because I like the arguing phase. Ever, I know. Well, I'm not ready to let go of that. You love that more than <laughs> well, anything. You brought it up. So you yeah. brought up that Gary is hurt. I mean, Artie lied about seeing a shrink for six months. I know. He I mean, that, was that, was work, that was work related. No, how was it work related? Were we going to fire you if you didn't go? No, listen, there's people that in my life. lazy related because you didn't want us to break your balls, but we weren't going to fire you. Well, I'll certainly admit to being lazy, but you guys, uh, here's a bulletin, guy. You guys aren't the only people in my life that are affected by that i i didn't you know my mother was comforted in thinking i might have been doing that so like you do to your parents sometimes yeah you lie but now you admit that your lies are wider than just drug related no the shrink is drug related it all ties into you know if you want to call it a disease i first of all i i don't think it's a disease i think it's just a bunch of assholes who want to get high I, I, but if you want to <laughs> if you want to call it a disease whatever then then that's part of it the lying and all that i mean dr drew will tell you that Dr. Drew did tell us that. Right, of course. I mean, and it compounds and stuff, but I, I've never lied. To, have I embellished stories to make them funnier? Yeah, but that's my job. I, I didn't lie about buying piss. <laughs> <laughs> Is Artie still dead on the wrap-up show, Gary? I think that's a major discussion that you shouldn't you know, give up. I'm uh, not going there anymore. You know, to the wrap-up show? No, yeah, I'm going to the wrap-up show. <laughs> oh, shit. But this, 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 uh, listen, I'm at the point now where Artie is mad at almost everything I say in the wrap-up no, show. No, 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 that, that's not, Robin, that's a lie. How, is, how am I mad at everything you Robin's say in the wrap-up? Really and, and Artie's, you know... I'm not honest, mad at you. I think it's funny. And Artie's quite honestly bored to tears by me. Oh, jeez. But listen, now I don't know what I can and can't say about... I like when you discuss show. Artie. I think you should continue to do I it. like when you discuss me. It fascinates yeah. me. I don't know what I can and can't say about Artie anymore. Clearly. You can say everything. Say whatever you want, Gary. How am I your boss? You, I'm not telling you what to do. He's just telling you you didn't like it. Right. The show's working. You want me to not? Yeah, I'm reacting to it. You're like the Rush Limbaugh of Artie. Like, in other words, you say <laughs> stuff and it provokes. Right. It's a provocative show. You've gotten a response. It means it's not boring. Artie's your Democratic Party. You right. know what's so crazy about Gary, too? He's in this cloud about my opinion with the Afghanistan shit. We were over there for a week. Right. He knows He knows how much fun we had together. He knows it was good. He was there. And he still doubts it. You know what I mean? It's like like I, mean, I doubt I mean, it because uh, I wasn't there. Right? I mean, of course. Hold <laughs> well, you didn't take a shot at whether we had fun or not. You took a shot about whether you wanted me there. Whether we had fun or not, is it the? Is Gar, it the listen, I came in here today knowing that you're so insanely sensitive about that, and I was pissed off at what you said. So. Clay, knowing that you're so insanely sensitive about that, and I was pissed off at what you said, so clearly I'm tr I'm trying to make you mad. <laughs> so you know what? Here's the really fucked up thing. This is what it all comes down to. I I don't know whether to believe you right now. I swear to God, I don't know. What I don't I don't know what I, I don't know what the truth is. Did you really like having? I think he liked having you in Afghanistan. But I, don't know I think he already sees that he upset me so much right, that, he feels that now bad. he's reeling it in, and I don't know. Listen, whether man. This, listen, I don't man. Know the uh, truth of the lies anymore. No, no, no. I, 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 yeah, I did upset you. Mission accomplished. The did way, you mean the way, it? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, listen, man. Did you mean it, Artie? If you, if you Art, can't tell whether Artie. or not... Wait, wait. If you can't tell whether or not uh, I wanted you there by by our experience there together, then that's fucked up. I mean, maybe you thinking... didn't want him there, and it turned out better than you thought. Right. That's the whole point. Wait, I don't doubt that we had a good time there, but I'm still not sure that you wanted me there. Okay. Right. Well, did you want him there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I don't think that's honest. Oh, boy. <laughs> I got to go with Gary on. on this one. Come on, Artie. Be the brutally Artie, honest guy. You're a be brutal, you said you were going to be that. brutally honest. Be brutally honest. Come on. You did not want Gary in Afghanistan. I'll tell you what. All it's right. fucked up because we were just arguing and yelling, but I, I did want him to come. I, I believe you'd be truthful. <laughs> I don't know. You think I don't he's know. being deceptive. <laughs> Do you want to take a lie to take the test on that question alone? I'll take it. You will. Sure. You will take that. I just Because I just want Ed Tory in here for any reason. Right, me too. <laughs> Do you want Artie to... Uh, nothing drug-related to say. Just one question. Did you want Gary in Afghanistan? Well, if uh, I would I would certainly take that uh, lie detector test, but... You know, again, uh, that fucking detector test isn't credible. It <laughs> said Ralph is gay. <laughs> <laughs> Ed is one of the top guys in the country. What are you talking about? Any who lied, not just Ed. Right. Ed you're, saying, you're just saying the... Uh, in general. In general, the test. You don't buy it. Yeah. Do you want him to take the test, Gary? No. I just wanted to tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't need a test. It just, Artie, tell the truth now, and then I'll accept it. <laughs> well, Artie says this is the new truthful Artie about you, so here it comes. I'm going to ask him one last time. Okay. Artie, uh, in, in light of the fact that you are the new truthful Artie, <laughs> And you're going to talk the truth because Gary told the truth. He feels you lie about everything. Everything, right. Every fucking thing in your life is a lie. See, this is good with that. All right, so now. If you said yeah. this was Thursday, you'd uh, be lying. Right. We don't even know if you know what day it is. So here's the thing. Artie. It's the last day before did, we have a day off. Did you, want, did you want Gary in Afghanistan? Yes. <laughs> You know what? He gave me this smile too before he said it. Well, I did. I you know, look at Gary and you, see, you looked at Gary and you felt bad for him. You're looking at that TV screen. No, no, no that's not true. Yeah, that's not, I mean, you feel bad for him. He does have a Bob Cratchit look there. I believe Artie did not want. I believe Artie is lying now and does not. Well, want that's, what you're, that's what you're saying. Yeah. I think Artie had a different idea in mind when he was crafting the whole thing. Crafting. <laughs> <laughs> He's a mastermind. Artie's and idea yet, was to go to somehow score pure heroin on no, that guy. No, I was crafting Operation Merce. <laughs> And he had a whole scenario of what, who he was going to invite and, and certain people he needed for various aspects of being Artie. And then Gary said, I'd like to go. And uh, Artie, you know, well, had to change his plan. I didn't. I had someone else in mind who was yeah. a friend of mine. I didn't, I, I didn't ask Gary the same reason I didn't ask a guy like Fitzsimmons or even Levy. They have kids, and I just try, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I said... No to kids, but Gary was aggressive and he brought it up. So I'll say that I did have a friend of mine to come. Right. But when Gary wanted to come, that took up the other seat. And look, <laughs> Gary Gary is a guy known from the show. Anybody who's a fan of the show would love to see Gary. So, oh, fully. Well, there you go. So, you know. <laughs> the friend wasn't going to perform, correct? No, he wasn't. That's important. To the, in other words, I didn't take up a performer's spot. Right. He, no, he wasn't performing. No. But let's face it, your friend would have been a lot more fun than Gary. Right. I, quite frankly, my friend might have got lost in the poppy fields. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Artie's friend was going to do there. Artie was sleeping most of the trip. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's not a lie. <laughs> Uh, you know, so so. How about the crafts? in the beginning? How about when the owner of the New England Patriots? Right. I want I want the truth now. Okay, you, I'll give you the truth right. on all this stuff. When the the crafts, yeah, that's the craft family. They hired you to do the birthday, and then all of a sudden, Gary somehow glommed on. Well, I'll be dead honest with you here. I was I was actually thrilled he came because it was someone to talk to the make small talk with them. Right. I didn't know them that well. Right. So you so, liked when Gary. No, the guy was I, that's something I would have asked him to do. Can I tell else. you why I decided to go? Are they sort of asked, What are you doing in here? Well, because I, I think at this point I'm I'm pretty sure he's not going to throw anything at me. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um Jesus. It's it, with the crafts. I knew them before they had asked Artie. And in fact, they had contacted me about Artie going. Yeah. So on a weird level, I felt a responsibility to make sure everything went right, not only for Artie's sake, but for their sake as well. Do you know what right, I mean? Yeah. They were t like I wanted, like Artie wasn't bringing anybody but his cousins, and I. I thought there was and you a, know, Artie lies about everything, so he no, might not have shown no. up. No, but no, no, it wasn't that. I just knew that. I <laughs> didn't know that. Show up for. No, no, I, I knew Artie <laughs> didn't. I knew Artie didn't know them. <laughs> right. I knew that he was there to perform, but that it was going to be a private party. I was very. And helpful. I wanted. I just, but, but right. I did it as much for the crafts as I did it for Artie, and then uh, absolutely a part of it I did for myself. I wanted to see what was going on up there. It, it was, was an fun. interesting, uh, you know, I mean, it was a private jet back and forth. It was fun, but I, I would have been uh, in a bit of a disarray without Gary there because I, I, I don't like making small talk with people right. who I barely know. Was like, there I, anybody you had to kick off the no. plane this time? Because no, there was Gary plenty of room. <laughs> no, that was sounds like you two, you two are back to being buddies. The worst <laughs> thing I did, on, the worst thing I did on that trip was that wow, really we've gone full circle here. Is Artie alive again to Gary? I don't know. Was uh. he's, he's got a heartbeat. <laughs> The worst thing I did on that trip to Artie was Artie's uncle and I watched American Idol on the plane. And he looked at us like we were a couple of homos. Oh, and uncle, Artie was like disgusted. Yeah. Mm. Me and my uncle Tommy at least didn't watch it. But, uh, look, I, all right, this might have been the quickest argument makeup in the history of the show. <laughs> all right, well there you go. You guys had a lot of bad words. I just can't you. believe that. Uh, obviously, look, that's a sensitive subject. The Gary, the Afghanistan thing. I can't believe that whatever got in his head of with that doubt is so there that we were fucking over there. Like I can't hide disdain for somebody for a week. I forgot. Not in Afghanistan. I forgot no, no, but I didn't think you had disdain. You're missing the point. I didn't think you had disdain. If I resented for me. you for any reason for coming and taking a, a friend's. Uh, spot, believe me, uh, it would have come out when I was on the 15 Valium in Kyrgyzstan Airport. <laughs> it sort of did at one point. It did? Well, no, Artie no. got really mad at me at one point during the trip, and it was just, it got really ugly. That no, was, that, 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 that was very hurtful to me, too. Well, was, what, what, when was that? Oh, on the Valium?
What, or after the I was on, on the forty uh, value after the night <laughs> after the night. You see, no, don't exactly. It was fifteen value. Oh, it was fifteen. Oh, it was only fifteen. Uh, and what no, else it was fifty by eight they? Ambien and three shots of wild turkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God in heaven! What are we gonna what do? By the way, dude, I was that in I was in, an elephant. Uh, I was in Kyrgyzstan. Oh my God! Oh my God. God. Yeah, right. How it's do you easy. handle it's that? It's easy many? not to drink in uh, Ibiza, wherever you guys go. How many? <laughs> how many drugs can you take? A lot. He has a tremendous constitution. Sheesh. Listen, the late John Belushi and. Chris Farley had tremendous constitutions. Wow. Everyone always says that. They were dead at 33. That's right. You've outlived them all. That's You're right. a better drug taker than they are. He has more tolerance. What did you used to say years ago when I used to listen to you? What you used to say, uh, <laughs> Keith Richards is the best white Greatest drug. white drug taker ever. <laughs> well, the guy is. <laughs> Look I mean, at him. First he's of all, alive. He's still the, alive. I mean, he looks the, like Dracula. <laughs> even the cigarette smoking. I mean, this guy smokes constantly. On stage. Don't. On stage. He can't even put down a cigarette. And when he's in the middle of a guitar solo, he's got one burning <laughs> right. in there. He's got the, the cigarette in the guitar. Him and Ron Wood. Both. Yeah, and the guy's, you know. Thin and looks good, you know, for a guy who's done that much. So I mean, but, crazy, he ran up a tree and almost killed him. Right. Anything I said on that shit, you can't believe. I mean, of course. It was, it was, I, I, you know, again, part of me was like, I wondered if it was truth serum. What did he say? <laughs> well, let, let me tell you what happened. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even remember that I never had this out. And, and, and as long as we're having it out, I want Artie to know because I, I don't know if you, I don't know what he remembers and what he doesn't. So the whole <laughs> temper tantrum in the airport, you know, I'm there also videoing everything. Right. And at, a couple of times I went to pull the camera out. I go, you know what, man, this just it, it, I wanted to. But he was in such a state that I felt if he saw the camera, he'd smash it. Right. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> he was really he was frantic and, and right. wanted to he wanted to he be wanted out, to get of out of there. Yeah. And, and right. you know what? <laughs> we were all right behind him. Nobody's going to deny. We were all like, let's just get the fuck out of here. You were handling it much more professionally. Right. I, was I, mean, pay, the, I, I was ready to pay, what, $18,000 yeah. for a the, flight. Howard, the worst part of it was we walked right by the plane we were supposed to be on. Right. Like we were on the tarmac, and, and we go, oh, there's our plane. They go, yeah, you can't get on that one. <laughs> we're like, when's the next plane? They're like, oh, I think 36 hours. We're like, fuck! You know? and this is after 20 hours of wait, Why playing cards you? and killing time at Bagram in Afghanistan while we watched... But toilet why, paper get loaded. But why couldn't you get on your flight? <laughs> because it was already, like it was the doors were shot. But I don't understand. Were you late? Yes, we barely made it. Like we were. But so that wasn't our fault. Oh. A, 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 it wasn't our fault for being late. We were so long at one airport. The connecting flight. You know, we just. So it's the airline's fault. Oh, ab yeah. oh absolutely. Well, no, it was the arm. The army's but fault. A military flight. Right. You can't yell at that. Right. right. It's like, look, you're fucked. All right. So, yeah. so, so now Artie's in the airport. Artie's very upset. He takes, you know, he gets the pills and he gets drunk and he's throwing things. He's pissed. And like I said, we're all pissed too. I'm not giving him any shit about that. So we end up going back to the to the base. And we go back. <laughs> but to the you back. didn't throw things and stuff. No, no. But so now Artie's no, really. I, I did. Artie's really. He's fucked up beyond belief. Right. I mean, he's really, really out of it. He goes back to his room, and he sits down. And I come in with a camera, and I say, Artie, you know, what do you want to say? And I know that he's fucked up. And I, but but this is so important to the story. I know that I would never in a million years use this piece of tape. But why? Oh, that I would never in a million years use this piece of tape. But why tape without then? showing? Because. Because it's a moment that's getting lost. Plus, you were calm. Plus, it's but isn't one it of great to moments. just have that moment lost? Dad? Yeah, but isn't that one of those moments that will become legendary? No, 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 and, no, 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 no. no. I, I think you see, if you this, one, this is where I argue. Music. I think a true friend does not tape that. No, but I would have never, ever, but wait ever a second. It could shown be, it, it could be just the other way. Like you don't, you're you throw in like, the thing that Teddy like was terrible, but then it became. I don't. I can't. I can't. No, but Howard, I can't. I Remember? can't watch that. Right. I cringe looking I at it. I cringe looking at it, too. I, yeah, but okay. But it could be the thing that makes you snap out of whatever it is you're in that you won't make I the think right I, decision I think for. I could figure that it looked pretty... Yeah, but it's the same... Without, without the video. When you work Sometimes on this show... You and you guys were nice enough not to air that for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, you told me to air it. Yeah, right. Okay, clearly I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> we called Artie. That. We called Artie. I said, Artie, I'm not going to air it. He's in a straitjacket, and he Edward. said, air it. You called me and told me to air it. Our decision decision was not to air it, Artie. Why yeah. did you overrule it? Yeah, right. We didn't air oh, it. Yeah, right. That's the truth. Well, why would you listen to anything I said? Because I believe you. <laughs> At least then I did. Right. Can I, finish? I want to finish <laughs> the story because it's important. It's yeah. important for me to get it out. So now Artie and I are in this little tiny dorm room together. Okay. And uh, I start taping it. Artie goes, shut that fucking thing off. He goes, I know exactly what you're up to. I know how you are. I know what the fuck you're thinking. And, and I'm like, okay, I get it. I got it. I got all that. Well, wouldn't you think I, that? If I, if you're like on Hold the on. ground throwing up and I've got a camera. Yeah, I need anything. But you know what? I could always erase that. I could never go back and get Why it. Why would you even take?
believe because it. it's just the thought of because you might have wanted it. Oh yeah. All right. All right so we might have. I might have wanted, wanted it. Let's move ahead. So God, I shut that camera off living in a different world. He's very upset. He's very agitated. You should never have turned the camera I off. I shut the camera off. <laughs> That's my problem and, with it. And then Artie, I thought, fell asleep. And I have to tell you, it was me and David Tell and Nick DiPaolo, Jim Florentine. It's like 5 in the morning now. It's light out. We all tell Artie we're going to bed. This is, We're like in fifth grade. So that Artie thinks that we're all going to our rooms, and then we agree that we're going to meet out in five minutes to go get breakfast. But we don't, want Artie to know, we don't want Artie to know we're out. So we're standing out in front of the... Of the um, the barracks, <laughs> and we're and we're all having this conversation like, oh my god, Artie's so fucked up. We're just sort of like, you know, decompressing and everything. And all of a sudden, the towel goes, oh shit, there he is. He's out. So Artie was out. It was like, fuck. And that's when like Artie, in front, he got out. in front of everybody, and I don't know what Artie remembers and what he doesn't, but in front of the gr this group of guys, Artie came right at me physically, yeah. you know, and he's like, you motherfucker, I know you more of the same, you fucking cocksucker, you piece of shit. And just started calling me the wow. worst names you can wow, imagine. Wow, wow, And then the next morning, or, well, the next afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I the slept right in the half. half. Already got up, and when he saw me, he goes, yeah, you know, by the way, last night, I was a lot of, out of line. All right, let's go get some breakfast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that was, well, like, I, I, was like, I don't remember I was all terrified, that. Howard. <laughs> I was, I was, and I wasn't sure what Artie remembered and what he didn't. Well, so, like, there's a part of me that I've always thought, does Artie know what he said to me? And I don't remember. Just, was that just a simple apology, or does Artie not remember any of it? But I will tell you, I, Howard, did I talk to you about this in the summer, how hurtful it was to me? Yeah. I, I, don't, really remember me. I don't remember details about what I said, but I mean, you know, shit. Yeah, I, Gary was on the phone with me for, <laughs> I, I knew all about this, like, for, like Gary was on the phone with me for days about it. It hurt. It just really, he said, said, well, I mean, but, I don't know, you could have called me and said it, you know. But I didn't know, I didn't, I couldn't even figure, I, I almost didn't want to call you because if I did, yeah. I didn't want to remind you what you might not have remembered. Well, but you see, now you know something that I don't really know all of that's festering, which is why you might be aggravated to or might think that way about me. I don't know about Well, it's also, again, since it happened there, it's a part that right, makes me wonder, right, right. Did, you, did Artie want me there? No, I, I mean, in that state, I was mad someone was filming me, you know? I mean... No, I get it. And that makes me question someone's friendship if they're filming me while I'm, you know, practically throwing I'm up in an question whether he's a good producer. He stopped filming. Well, there's that. But, well, there, well, there's that, too. To me, I'm like, okay, what's the fuck he... fuck is he over there if he ain't filming that great moment? It's but like, it wasn't your video he was shooting, was it? Well, it was for, yeah, it was for like the TV a, show. You start yeah. thinking, if I'm going to jump off oh. a, if I'm gonna jump off a cliff, gonna does he talk you. me off the cliff? No. Or does he videotape me he's jumping? He's a documentarian. He's a documentarian. <laughs> he can't help you with a cliff. Listen, Once I'll, you're going over that cliff, you're that's there. Getting, that's making the news, I'll not recording you, it. I'll tell you one thing, though. What do you want to jump off a cliff and not have a memory of it? I'll tell you one thing that um be great for my kids to see. Here's your dad. You're not having kids. I I want I want to have an illegitimate kid. I decided. Oh my like the you Jerry Lewis Eberhard. thing. Yeah. You know, and then but I'll take care of it. Angie so, Everhart announced yesterday she is having a child. And it doing could be a reality Artie's show. child. It could yeah, be Artie's right. child. So yeah, listen. If it was but, Artie's baby, be fantastic. Here's the funny thing about about that whole thing. As fucked up as I was, the army guy that was with us, the Vietnam guy, Jeff Anthony, you know, uh, this fucking, you know, black guy who could do like a million push-ups and sit-ups. Right. and strong guy. And he just knows everything about the military, and he's just been there, done that. He was tolerant of a lot of our bullshit behavior, okay? Right. But... And he tolerated a lot of bullshit from me. Right. But the one thing I remember in that man is he he had had enough of me. Okay. <laughs> that, that, so so back at the barracks, yeah. already wandering around. Right. I'm wandering right. around. A high as a kite. Clearly fucked up. Which they were. That was their biggest fear in getting Artie over there. He right. he, he really did right. tell yeah. them that yeah. he was fine. Jeff he turned did. to us. Jeff turned to us, and he goes, "You fucking guys got to figure this out." Yeah. And no, I'm like, figure. What, you saw what we're doing. So right. he. I guess at one point he just got. You know, it's like you know, the, the Marine in them. Yeah, these guys aren't going to figure it out. <laughs> this asshole, junkie, hippie, fucking comedian. <laughs> so he, he went over to me, and this I do remember, and he grabbed me by the shoulder. Now, I only knew this guy to be a friendly guy right. all the time. He grabbed me, and he got me in, like, a mini headlock. <laughs> and, and he looked at well, You me, make friends wherever and you go. He looked at me, and he said, listen, motherfucker, this is an army base, okay? You get the fuck inside and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> And you listened, right? And I went right inside. I marched yeah, you inside. You see, that's what you need. <laughs> you need to Gary, join the army. He's not well. yelling at that guy. Right. I said, if that guy, if this 58-year-old guy beats the shit out of me right now. <laughs> I mean, Did he see the tirade against Gary? Yeah. No, I'm sure, well, no, he didn't. Oh, he wasn't there? He didn't. It was, just, uh, it, was, it was Dave and Jim Florentine and Nick and... Uh, Meanwhile, me and Attell, 
had just talked for, for, for years, me and the tell have always talked about how we want to get off booze and, and all sorts of drugs and everything in the road. And, and a tell, a tell, I think, has still been sober for almost yeah. a year. I think you cured him. Which yeah. is fantastic. But, but he doesn't want to drink again, he said. <laughs> he had been sober for four four months at that time. But right. the only thing with Dave is he smokes, I'm going to say, five packs of cigarettes yeah. a day. I know. He can't get rid of that. But He also he, doesn't sleep much either. Uh, no, he's a vampire. So. <laughs> yeah. He is, and he's always been. That's why he's such a great comedian. He, I mean, like on, a, on Easter Sunday, on, on Christmas Day, a tell had five spots at the comedy show. Wow. wow. That's, why he's, that's why he's so great. He's I'm sure. How do you know? Talent and doing it. We right. landed from this fucking 87-hour trip in Afghanistan. We land, land at 5 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, and Dave gets out, he gets his cell phone and goes, who are you calling? He goes, I want to see if I can get a spot at the, at the, the you know, comedy store. You tonight. know what? They, here's a great thing. Wow. Like, tonight, that worked that day, night. The day you landed. We landed at 5. He, I think he went on at midnight. Here's oh, why yeah. he might be the greatest com comic, I think, of my generation, like club comics, and why he deserves it is what... Like in the beginning of the week, they they call it calling in your avails, yeah. your availabilities to a club. Like on a Monday, you call up uh, the manager to stand up New York at a comic strip or the cellar, and you go, "Listen, I'm available Monday through Wednesday." And they go, "All right, you got a nine o'clock Wednesday, nine to nine twenty, you know." And right. they give you your spots for the week, and that's you know you go. So, well, we're, we're still in Afghanistan. We're in Kandahar, and and Jim Florentine has a special cell phone that we can only use some of the time. We had just been bombed. There was a bombing that made the papers. We're all calling up our family and going, I'm okay, we're okay. And then I, I hand the phone to Attell, and in the back I hear Attell go, the name of the woman who runs the comedy cellar is Esty. Uh -huh. <laughs> he goes, Esty, listen, I'll be back Monday. I got Monday through Friday. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. That's what he's using. Yeah, the a real professional. Phone. Called that's in his avails. Uh, I like that guy. Yeah. See, that's, that's why funny. I always admired him. All right, boys, it seems as if the fun part of this argument oh. is over. Now it's the makeup part, and I can skip all that. They can do that off the air. Yeah, go, nice. go make love to each other off the air. Uh, you know, right. uh, whatever. All right. That was a good argument, though. I well, thought, Artie was dead for a little while. That was great when Artie was dead. <laughs> Artie didn't like that. He didn't like being dead. They they made up. He came back. A couple of knockout punches from both yeah. sides. Did you see a white light, Artie, before you came back? You know what that was like? That was Hagler Hearns. It was only it three was rounds. But a lot of blood. <laughs> went fast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure everyone enjoyed that, though. The, do you ever the the, the Hagler Hearns fight? I, I have that on DVD. The end of the first round, Hagler's face is bleeding, and he looks at Tommy Hearns with a look of like such death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then and then he fucking knocked him out. Yeah, Tommy Hearns. That was all going down when I was living in Detroit. The Tommy Detroit Hearns. Tommy Hearns mania. Yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. All right, thanks for that that nice fight, you guys. Good yeah. job. You guys can uh, go home Thanks for starting now. off the morning. Yeah. You know what? I got mad. You just killed I, a nice 45 minutes for me. <laughs> I got mad last night thinking about As soon as I heard Gary say that, I got mad, and it was festering, and I said, I'll sleep on it. And I woke up today okay, and then, you know, something triggers you. And then, you know, yeah, I, I might even in the next hour play it again, get you all worked up so you guys can go at it. Again. <laughs> I think already saw me. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. You know, I just. Uh, it was good for you. Give, yeah. a little, little, give you some time on the show. Oh, good. Yeah, because I haven't had enough air time. <laughs> you need some more air time. <laughs> All right, that was fun. I can't top that. Sheesh. Let's go home. Hey, Robin. Yes. Um, you wanted to talk to me about um, the guy that got arrested at my appearance last night? So Gary went to to do his <laughs> lecture? Gary as teacher. Get, Professor Gary. <laughs> so Gary, there's a place called the Learning Annex. They call it the Learning Annex because all it really is is a club when you think about it, except they call it the learning annex and they get people to work there cheap to appear and they tell them you can teach a class. Yeah, and I think part of the allure to most of the classes, if you look at the catalog, is uh, it's a single pickup place. Yeah. So like, Jackie fell for it. I think he did it for like 300 bucks because he went, hey, it's fun. Yeah. I did it for less than that. I yeah. did it for like $100 honorarium in a, in a hotel room. Yeah, and meanwhile, uh, probably a couple of hundred people show up at 40 bucks a head. They're making lots of money. They make lots of money, and Jackie normally would be to a club owner, hey, I what thought it was mean? some kind of city college or something. No. I didn't realize it was realize Gary too said, late that it was all independent. Oh, yeah, and Gary that. fell for I mean, uh, Jackie fell for it, but Gary was like, I'm not falling. They would have been offering Gary 200 bucks for a long time. Yeah. And you know what they said to me? He, I, had 100, he told me he had 130 people there last night at 40 bucks yeah, a head. Said, they said, say hello to that sucker Jackie. Yeah. Oh. Hey! <laughs> no, but you know what's really funny? Have you ever seen... Um, their uh, whatever it is, their course outline or their book, it's on newsprint. And one time the guy said to me, well, you know, we have to put our book out. I said, it's a newspaper. How much yeah. does that cost? Yeah. Oh, oh, they're telling you the cost goes into that book? Oh, right. Promotion. right. <laughs> Tell them to leave you out of the book. Mm -hmm.
Like Elle McPherson's on the cover of the catalog is what she's going to do. A class. A class. But, you know, all it's going to be is a bunch of horny guys with cameras. Yeah. Hey, uh, could you take off your clothes so we can take pictures <laughs> of you? Yeah, all those sure, would be photographers. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be one of them, man. Yeah. I dig her a lot. Yeah, you know, I ought to go with you. I love oh, Elle McPherson. I just want to look at her. Yeah, me too. Do you inhale when they take pictures? <laughs> So uh, you were there last night giving your speech, right? They don't do it at a club; they actually do it um, like at a, like in a hotel ballroom. And you're telling yeah, me because I don't even think they have a facility. It's right. like a place. No, they do have a facility. Oh, they do. I wasn't sure until last night, but they do. <laughs> All right, so 130 people is a big class. Yeah, yeah. Now, what happened? So, um, you know, we did the whole class, and then we were doing uh, questions and answers. And some guy was there, and he raised his hand. Yeah. And he said, um, you know, like Stutter and John was there, and Captain Jackson. And the guy goes. Uh, at what point is Howard going to be here? Right. And I said, I thought he was being goofy. Right. No, he says, where's Howard right now? I said, he's home sleeping. Right. And I said, well, at what point will Howard get here? And I said, he's not coming. And he goes, hey, man, they told me he was going to be here. And I said, who told you that? And he said, I called the learning addicts today, and they said he was going to be here. So right. I said, you must have been mistaken. I said, has anybody else here under the impression that Howard was going to be here? And everybody said no. You know, so I don't know what this guy's deal was. Well, he started getting really, really, you know, bummed out. He goes, this is BS, man. This is false advertising. I want my money back. So right away, I thought you guys were, you know, throwing Goofing throwing at something at me. But it wasn't even funny. Right. So the guy kept carrying on. So finally, I said to the people in the class, I said, would we like this guy to leave so we can have some fun? And everybody said, yeah. So there was hotel security. Right. And they took him out. And I figured, hey, that's it. The guy's gone. As they're taking him out, he's screaming, this is BS. I want my money back. I'm like, hey, give the guy his money back. Well, they got him outside, and like five minutes later, another guy comes in and says, My friend's being arrested in the lobby thanks to you. And I said, <laughs> Me? I didn't do anything. He was the one. I said, He can't be getting arrested. You don't get arrested for being an idiot. Right. And, uh, and, after and the if that was the case, you'd have a life sentence. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, it turns out that after the class was over, I spoke to the hotel security, called the police, and they said they had him arrested for disorderly conduct. Wow. Ooh. Okay, so should I tell him now? Go ahead. What? We set that whole thing up. Did you? Oh, yeah, because oh, oh, oh. you're a moron. <laughs> But I don't understand, like, what was it? Because we videotaped the whole thing for the E-Show. Uh, <laughs> just wanted to see how you handle handled stuff. Heckler. Just wanted to see how you handled the heckler. Did, did you you handle, a, yeah, of course. That was even, my guy. He wasn't even that good an actor. And we had a video camera taping you the whole time. Oh, you well, did? we couldn't yeah. get somebody you'd know. <laughs> so, uh, so where'd you put the camera? In a, uh, we had it hidden in a box. But you should have left it there. I mean, I wouldn't, listen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say anything on the camera that I, you know. You should, we, we taped your whole thing. Yeah. So, and what'd you hear about it? Did, what? did you hear there was any material? I haven't heard I haven't talked to anyone well, yet. Did you hear there was any material that was useful for uh I don't know yet. To goof on me well, about? Let's see, I got a whole list of stuff here. I, evidently they found a lot of interesting stuff. Oh, you, oh man. Here's Gary. Oh. Let's you mean wait a minute. This. Wait a minute. You mean it's already like uh already... golden leader. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who did this? We did. Yeah, this gets done on time. Yeah, this gets yeah, done right. on time when you're not involved. Everybody gets enthusiastic when oh, you're yeah. Gary. Oh, well, please. <laughs> yeah, I had a whole thing. First, we had, like, goofy questions, but you would have spotted that right away. Yeah. I said, so why don't you have a guy just get up and start yelling <laughs> and that it's a ripoff? And there was supposed to be, like, six people yelling that it was a ripoff. They were, but, but, but unfortunately, in. unfortunately, they were all yelling outside. Oh. Because afterwards, they said, yeah, he was with, like, six people, but oh. only the one guy said something. Oh, I see. Whose friend was he? I don't know where we got that guy, but he must have been pretty good because he convinced Because Gorilla came in and said, you should have seen it last night. They all thought it was real. Yeah. Oh, I can't what? wait to hear it. What would we think differently? <laughs> Are you all set? I think we're all wrecked. All right, here we go. So here's Gary at the Learning Annex as some guy stands up in the audience and tells him this is a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> I love this show. Watch your back. Mm-hmm. It doesn't appear right now that we're going to play ourselves, as far as I know. Although I know that some of us are represented in the movie, um, we may have other pl people playing us. Look at Gary disappearance is answering questions about what he knows as much as... About you, I, that movie is uh, anybody on the street does. That's right. If you listen to the radio show, you'd know as much yeah. about the movie as Gary does. Yeah, but see, I have the option. I get to hear all four hours. Not oh, everyone gets to hear all four <laughs> hours of the show. It's true. I'm a conduit to the, you know, to the class. Any good-looking girls in the crowd? Um... I don't remember. It was mostly, it was mostly guys. It, mostly guys. It, it was a lot of women, and there were a couple of good-looking ones. But for some reason, all I could see was Celeste and Melrose Larry. Oh, they were. They actually oh, went. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I tend to like stick on them. Because Celeste was all the way off to the side because she was in her wheelchair. She had a yeah. shirt on that had so much writing on it that you couldn't. It was like I'm Celeste from the Howard Stern show. You know, yeah, just to let people know. But that. I, I couldn't understand it. All right. You mean you didn't invite her to be a part of it? <laughs> Melrose Larry got up. You know, I said, does anybody have a question? So Melrose Larry got up, and I, I, kept, I ignored him for like the first... Hey, 15, he paid his money. I ignored him for like the first 15 questions, so then yeah. I said, all right, Larry, you can ask a question. I said, no statements, just a question. He goes, well, I have a short statement. Oh, no. So he says, 
I just want to say that I've been to see a psychiatrist, and I'm all fixed up now. And then everyone just started booing him, and he sat down. <laughs> he had a statement That's to make. Funny. What do you think he was in a 12-step program? No. It's a learning annex thing. He kept, he kept following me around all night, explaining how he was out of his mind. Right. Um, too addicted to the show that he couldn't really function. But now it's okay. Yeah. But in the meantime, but he's still at your appearance. And he, in the meantime, he said, "I will be downstairs tomorrow if you need me." Okay. Very good. All right. Here's Gary being heckled. I, hope, I would hope, you know, John and I have discussed this, and we really don't know the answer. I would hope that we would get an opportunity to turn up in the movie in some sort of a cameo, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> he and John are discussing that. Yeah. John, stuttering John, you not stuttering John. John. Yeah, you yeah. won't. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you and stuttering John have discussed uh, showing up in some form. Oh, John's, John's whole thing is that he can't believe that you're going to get actors to play us. We were having like a, And I said, John, we don't act. First of all, that that hasn't been decided yet, and quite frankly, the movie actually is about you. Yeah, yeah. Now don't break just, John's bubble. But but I just said, like, even if we were going to be in the movie, I can't act. I'm not an actor. You're trying to make a slick movie. Exactly. There were well, scenes. What are they going to do? Crash the set and just get on film? Well, John will crash the movie. <laughs> I was hoping I get like a part as a bartender for a minute or something. I see. Well, that's too much for you. <laughs> a minute? I mean, you don't want a minute on screen? You could ruin my career. He's <laughs> Dice... in the bottles with his teeth. Yeah. Dice let Hot Tub Johnny in his dopey movie. Yeah, he did well. And look at how it <laughs> yeah. did, yeah. Yeah. That's a perfect testament. Dice is still sitting home wondering what happened. <laughs> Why is Howard Stern showing up tonight? Oh, oh, here you go. So here's the guy. Oh, no. The guy must have done a good job because you've convinced Gary. Is he an actor or something? Do we know I don't know. Him? Anybody know anything out there for me? Want to come in? Okay. Who right. knows? Yeah, when's Howard Stern showing up tonight? <laughs> What's that? When's Howard showing up tonight? When's it on tonight? No, when's Howard coming here tonight? Oh, uh, uh, he's not. He's not. Oh, he's already what? He's already well into REM. Uh, well, I thought uh, they'd say on the phone that he would be coming tonight, Pop. Oh, is that what he said? The, the guy on the phone said he'd possibly come tonight. You might have believed him. No, no. I apologize. No, well, no, no. He, uh, is anybody else here under the impression Howard was coming tonight? No, they told me on the phone that he was coming tonight. Who did? The person at the learning house on the phone. I thought we had a whole bunch of people lined up to start screaming, yeah. Yeah, they were supposed to second it. There was, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, the person who's speaking now, his name is Jared, and he's not an actor, but you know, he's a real big fan of the uh, real big fan of the show. Can you answer my question? Sure. Okay. There was a bunch of people planted, but you know, no one really. They were, they were it, it got a little hostile, and they didn't, you know. Well, they, they were nervous. Well, a couple of them just stood up and said, "Yeah, we we yeah. thought he was coming too." What did they think was going to happen? What? I was that. hoping for that. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Yeah. Where's Scott we to to Einziger? To I told him how to handle this. Yeah. Who planted these people? Standing. Where's Howard? Where's Howard? It didn't happen. I see. Uh, they uh, planted a bunch of wimps. They, they did. Chicken out. I know. Who are these plants? Where did you get them from? Uh, a couple of them are my roommates. They actually acted like plants. <laughs> yeah. They, I, good acting. <laughs> yeah, really. All right, well, let's see how this plays out. Who did? The person at the learning house on the phone told me he was coming to Then they were mistaken. You can go right back and get a, a refund. No, it's a rip. No, wait a minute. All right, next. Rip off. Rip off. So it's a question that we do not have an answer to. We discussed it a couple of weeks on the air. I rec what happened there? I just heard her. He's jump. answering another question or something. Yeah, I think he's. I think he starts yelling some more. Like we didn't throw. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So what we did was I told him to sit back down and thirty seconds later start screaming rip off. Yeah. Asked him a lot of times. Um, he just doesn't do it. He doesn't. He says he doesn't do interviews. He's a sushi boy. But uh, I, you know, we've sort of discussed it on the air. It's a very odd thing, and and I don't understand why he doesn't. In the black shirt. How, how come Howard didn't come tonight? In the black shirt. How come he didn't come tonight? Because he wasn't invited. Is that the same guy? Yeah. Yeah. No. This is, no. This is me, boy Gary, from the Learning Annex. Not me. Is he coming out later? Is it, no, he said he was coming. <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? What did he say to me? No, hey, do I come to your job and rock the Slurpee machine? Come on, guys. No, All right, Gary. Gary doing... got come back. Wait, do I rock the Slurpee machine? <laughs> okay, You'd be rocking that Slurpee machine if you weren't here, believe it gets, me. It gets worse than that. All right. Do I come to your house and smack the out of your mother's mouth? Come on now. <laughs> smack the what? I can't say it. We, we, we allude to it. The um, male organ. Oh. Oh, oh, out of your mother's mouth. <laughs> oh, no wonder the guy got violent. Do I come to your house and smack the <laughs> mixed male organ out of your mother's mouth? Wow, Gary. Wow. Jeez, Thank you, Gary. Jackie Martin, <laughs> for those comebacks. Super. <laughs> hey, you want to be uh, in the black shirt. No, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Howard, right? Right. That's true. No, you're right. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Howard. What's that? I was told Howard's going to be here. No, you shut up. I was told Howard's going to be here tonight. And you know what? There's somebody waiting for you in the back. 
Oh, uh, you're so yeah. stupid. Yeah, yeah. He turned around. I couldn't see right in front of you. I couldn't see. Suddenly, it's Israel. Yeah. Hey, this is pretty good. Knesset or whatever. Yeah, right. Hey, this is pretty good. <laughs> Too bad the other guys didn't start oh. screaming. This is a ripple. And because you know what happened, what made me feel good was that the rest of the audience was sort of down on the guy, and it just seemed like one guy. I know. What happened to them? Oh. I don't know. Um, what, did you what coach him properly? Yeah, he was coached. He I'm holding you personally problems. responsible. See, what happened? What happened is that um, I didn't expect that the whole crowd was going to really turn in and jump on him like that. And we went over with the learning annex people and the security there. They said if he gets hostile, you know, they're going to escort. At this point, he's on his way out. He's being escorted out, which was all set up, too. Right. And then he was going to... No, you know, they shouldn't ask Gordon. They should let him no, sit back down again. Is, right, and then nobody later, else came to his defense. I know. So you know other people should have said it's a ripoff. We want our money back. I got a question. Yeah. How come everybody that hires me is so willing to set me up for <laughs> something? I know. I know. I mean, the learning yeah, getting people, mad at the learning no, I'm still mad at the guy with the puppet. I'll tell you that right now. If I ever see that guy, I'm so mad at him. <laughs> so you guys, would you guys like to see him leave so we can carry on? Yeah. See. Yeah. see you later. You got to go. What? Somebody had to back it up, then Gary right. would have been worried that, mm -hmm. man, they really did have the message wrong. Yeah, right. You know I mean? And I'm, I'm start apologizing. Well, you right. know, because what always makes me nervous is the one thing you always say. Why does Alan Funt get it right and I oh. can't get it right? My people. How many times did Funt have to go out before he could get a piece of tape? I masterminded a great, a great scam, got the whole thing worked out. You didn't talk to the people. I did. No, you didn't. Oh, oh you, didn't you mean, talk oh, oh. The people. You oh, come on. The people who talk to the people. Yeah, I, I mean, don't I have anyone in my organization who knows what's going on? Who gave the instructions? Who gave you the instructions? Einziger? I know. Einziger, why did I have you come back from world wrestling if you <laughs> are so bad? Our, our conversation, from what I remember, yes? was that you, you said we didn't want to have a lot of people. No, just like four or five. The conversation that I had with you is you explained it, is you have the one guy... Okay. No. And then you said oh. you guys sits down, and a minute later he says, "Rip off, right, right. rip off, guy, rip you never, off." You never instructed me to get other people to say. Of course, I said you got to have five or six people. You didn't. He's like a congressman I, now, as I recall. Oh. The conversation well, then use your head and think of something. <laughs> oh, I have one guy out of a sea of millions. Yeah, getting really. Heckled. Look at he's, like, he's getting no, turned on. Let me set up what happens. So at this point, the guy is yeah. getting he's getting escorted out. Right. And uh, the plan was for him to be, you know, ca calmed down by security, and then he'll come back in. Oh, good. But they said, uh, but uh, learning out of people said, and security said, if it gets hostile, which it did, and they all turned against him, then... Um, they wouldn't let him come they back? They wouldn't let him back in. So at this point, we sent security... What are you? Are you mulatto? <laughs> what are you? What are you Jewish? Jewish? You're Jewish? I don't know. He looks... He, I can't figure out what he is. He's one of those Jewish guys that looks black. Yeah. You're very strange. It's the hair. Blurt out, are you mulatto? I don't know. I'm, 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 to I'm listening to him talk, and I, I, I don't know. I, I'm trying to figure out what he is. <laughs> what are you? Are Jewish you Jewish? guy from Long Island. Yeah. With that hair... Yeah, uh, Sephardic, okay. Put a hat on. I'm sorry. He's got black features. He's Sephardic. What the neighbors look like? Uh, they were all white and waspy. <laughs> I bet uh, you. I bet you your mom's was into a mailman or something. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't want the mail here. You were kind of kind today. It's a bad haircut. For a white woman, you ain't bad. Woo, he's Roscoe Lee Goldstein. Roscoe Lee Goldstein. I got a special package oh, for you. Good thing. Special delivery. Yes, go you. ahead, Roscoe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Do people so, ever ask you if you're black? Uh, not really. The first. Okay, go ahead. Maybe All right, Roscoe. Dark in here, so yeah. so, uh, <laughs> maybe it's dark here. Maybe it's the excellent lighting from the E network. <laughs> All right, Harvey so Washington. Point, the, uh, the guy was gonna... <laughs> Harvey Washington. All right, go ahead. The guy was going to come back in, but we decided not. And said, I was going to shut up. <laughs> All right, so go ahead, yeah. You were saying. <laughs> come here to your pappy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I'm, I'm so get proud of my son. He on E. <laughs> <laughs> only I could tell him the truth. I only could tell him the truth. I'm the so proud of my son. He's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of my Jew son. Damn. He a star. How come he ain't a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> like the other Jew. Oh, a doctor. <laughs> like the rest of the Jew. <laughs> or an accountant. <laughs> like all the other Jew. <laughs> on a TV station. Well, he's on E. He's on e. <laughs> That's cool. Hmm. <laughs> he's working behind us. He's like a Schweizer. <laughs> oh, that must be my blood. <laughs> See, if he were all Jew, he would be a lawyer. He'd be the president of CBS. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so at this point, the guy was going to be escorted out. Right. And he was going to come back in, but we decided instead to send the security guy in to get, get a bag that the guy left there. Yeah. And bring out the guy who was sitting next to him. 
the guy next to him came out and we wired him up, and that's... Oh, good. Okay. Here we go. Oh, okay. I paid my money. I want a, I want a refund now. Uh, no. Sir, refund. I felt your pain. Good. I want a refund. Hey, I would let you stay, but you acted silly. Yeah, okay. So I'll still listen to the show. All right, yeah, all right. Whatever. Here. He was good, that guy. Supposed to be here. To, this is... I want a refund. That not costed me buy? anything. What? It's not costed me anything. Right. Bull. <laughs> um, way, way, way in the back. Way, way, way in the back. I actually just want to hear Gary answering the question, the normal question. Yeah. We'll have to listen to that next. I wanted to hear his lecture. Yeah, well, we'll hear some of that. We have that coming up next. Oh, wonderful. We have Gary being introduced by the Learning Annex director. Gary introducing his seminar. Gary's story about how, you know, what he did before the show, which was go to BOCES. Oh. How go? he voluntarily went to the idiot school for BOCES. That's true. <laughs> and he didn't even know it was an idiot school. And then Gary talking about what he does daily. Oh, that'll be interesting. Sure. <laughs> I rushed through that part. <laughs> for what? He's a big, you know, for giving you a hard time, he's just... Well, he can't be getting arrested. He is. He's a big fan. You know, he feels bad. Can we go, can you, like, go talk to the man? No. Oh, no. no. Gary. What? He was the a guy douche. Was no, the guy, the guy was acting silly. He's not getting arrested. Oh, he was a... Oh, it's, you guys are just goodbye. You guys, these guys are just being goofy. I'm sure Howard sent them. Uh, the guy right there. Oh, you see, you thought it. Yeah. No, I did. I really did. I just thought it was. Be but then afterwards, nobody sort of alluded to it. So I said, Ah, maybe oh. the guy was just an idiot. Oh. And then when they told you he had been arrested, did you think it was real? I just said, I, it, it seemed very hard to believe that you get arrested for heckling somebody. So I just, I didn't even think about it at all. Come on, Gary. No. Oh. Uh, this is definitely some sort of a wacky setup for the show, and we'll figure it out tomorrow. Oh. All right, so there you go. Hey, very good, Gary. He, he, he's like, he's punch drunk from all the wacky setups. Everything that happens, he thinks probably in his life is a setup for the show. Do you want to hear Gary being introduced by the Learning Annex director? Yes. All right, you'll hear that right after these words. I just want to see if there's anything worthwhile listening to on this fa fa fo lie tape. Okay. fo fo Gary, so I was just curious to see when someone hires Gary to give a guest lecture, what the hell he talks about. Did he work on this a long time? Did you ask him? No, I don't think so. Everybody was very satisfied last night. Were they? Really? felt slighted. How fun. many hours? Two hours? Uh, two and a half. Maybe maybe two forty. Gary hours. loves to rap about what he does on the show. He loves yeah. it. He'll talk to anyone about it. That could take up two and a half hours, don't you think? Yeah. I wish he spent that much time doing it. And <laughs> yeah, he's out of here pretty quick. He gets himself done pretty quickly in the day. Oh, that's just so not true. <laughs> here comes Gary. I listened, I listened during the commercials. I listened to the guy introducing him. It wasn't all that funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was just goofy. Did he, how did he introduce Gary? I mean, what do you say about a Gary when you have him? Come he out? said he's uh, he's known all over the world and as Baba Booey and uh, Baba Booey is. You know what you do? You list Howard's credits and then yeah. you say I assisted on. Him. And he goes. Uh, he also uh, was the uh, producer of the Howard Stern Show, producer of Butt Bongo Fiesta, which he wasn't. Segment yeah. producer. Oh, he's segment. A, he's a segment producer. I see. Which he wasn't either. And. Uh, what segment were you the producer of? I don't remember, but that's what it said on the credits. Did it? When, when was he in the monkey outfit? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's segment. right. During that segment. Well, that's more acting. Yeah, I know Gary, like, always wanted a credit as segment producer. But at, at some point, your resume looks dumb because he's everything he has a credit for is anything I've done. Uh-huh. So I give it to him. I mean, it's no big deal to me. I mean, I, call, I see Gary. But can you really put that on a resume? Yeah, I mean, it's an empty. Laughed out of the room. Yeah, it's an empty thing to have segment producer if you really didn't do anything. Now wait a second. Everything I do isn't involved with the show. I did book Stuttering John's video. That's right. <laughs> and I did. Uh, I was a um, a consultant for uh, the Colin Quinn show on MTV for about a day, three weeks. Yeah. Uh, the show didn't last that long. No, not my fault. Not Colin's fault. <laughs> People go ba ba booey. I hear when they, when you walk out. Mostly, oh, mostly Melrose, Larry. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to an evening with ba ba booey. Hundred and thirty people with nothing better to do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Nice job so basically what I'm going to do is, is talk about uh, how I got to where I am, what it is that I do, because um, if you were to listen to Howard, I really don't do anything. Oh, so, uh, he's going to refute that tonight. We'll, we'll actually uh, play around and figure out what it is that I do, and I'll show some tapes, a lot of them from our, our old Channel 9 TV show, because we really did some legendary stuff there that, that hardly ever got an opportunity. Jerry goes around showing tapes of my old TV show, which I think I have a problem with. I haven't figured out why yet. Can I can I just say something? Yeah. 
I know you asked me, and I said, okay. Yeah, but, you, you were the guy who said... And I said I, quite frankly, I said to Gary, I don't know that you have the right to do that. This, this whole thing was sort of um, inspired by you, because I went to see Billy West, and I said, well, you know, I told you what Billy did, and you said, hey, you should do something like that. <laughs> no, you should do something like, like what Billy does, get a cartoon, Ren and Stampy, <laughs> not, not show my tapes. <laughs> inspired by me. Mm. Why am I the inspiration for all his bad ideas? I would never do any. If you told me to stop doing it tomorrow, I would. I would stop never do, doing it. Okay, I will. I would Thank never you. do anything oh, oh. Like right, that good. you didn't want. So they're showing tapes of me. I don't know how yeah, I feel I about that. Why am I well, not well, showing tapes of me? With Gary. I don't know. Well, I'm in some of the tapes. Gary. We did it's, some great things. Like I showed, you know, uh, me get my hair cut on the Channel Nine show, oh. and I talked about how, like, I showed um, the Hooker Hollywood Square, uh, like, just a small segment of it, and I told the story about how I went to get the hookers. Well, maybe everyone on the show should just go around taking tapes of stuff I've done and just show it to people. Well, we had, then we I, could have, then we could, then everyone could just burn up. I, all I might material. have had a little bit to do with some of these things. Yeah, so what if you had something to do with it? You were paid for yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, after Howard gets an idea, a lot of people have something to do with it. Yeah, I mean, what do you do? So you <laughs> own it, and so does no, everyone no, else. No, I never said okay. that. I Stop it. showing me. Why is everyone involved with me? Why is everyone involved with me? <laughs> you gotta start doing something on your own. Produce that baby you're having. I am. You know, what you could have shown was your MTV audition tape. Oh, yeah. Please. Yeah. That's yeah. No, that's not go. Oh, that's a Show things that you've done, not what I've done. Don't show anything with my face in it. Thank you. Yeah, some of your other, you know, your Ricky Lake appearance. Yeah, uh, you've done wacky things. Other cable access shows. That is, done. yeah, all the things you've I done. I could have put this together. You should come and talk to me. What? I could have put this together for you without Howard Tape. You know, Robin, Jackie, if, if Jackie Robin, might be a pain in the ass, but I'll tell you something. At least Jackie just tells his stupid jokes. <laughs> he doesn't ask me to write them. That's all. Just plug him. That's commendable. <laughs> which is something he deserves. Wait, you're plugging and you're giving Gary a ah! I, I give I give Gary his whole life, uh, his nourishment. Does anybody dispute that? Oh, no, but I mean, for oh, God's oh, sakes, oh. just leave me out of it. You should have done a lecture. What was that? You should have done a lecture. Why party. didn't you oh, yeah. videotape Howard with a special message about Gary? Yeah, right. A Gary message. <laughs> Pay to be seen. Oh, boy. So, he's, so basically what he told you he's going to do is he's going to tell you what he does and then show tapes of me. Yeah. <laughs> and his I learning guess that's what he does. He follows you around. So how much money did I make last night? Um. Zero. <laughs> Where's my cut? I guess I'll start from the beginning. How I, how I ended up with Howard Stern. Um, when I was in high school, how many people here are from New York State? Yeah. They, they, they flew in from all oh, over yeah, the country. They, were from all they all did. Some of them did. And was uh, Howard? There's New Jersey. I'd fly in two of you to see my tapes. There's New Jersey and Connecticut. You know. Right. Oh, what Posies is. <laughs> This is his resume, Bo sees and then the Howard Stern show. This is who I Yeah, have. but you know what? He, I love this way he's speaking. He just starts mentioning names of places and getting a <laughs> I know. How many people from New York State? That's not my <laughs> fault. <laughs> <laughs> How many people know Bo Cease? Yay! <laughs> All right. I like that. Okay. There's really a non-story here. The guy was in high school. He was the stupidest guy in his high school. Went and learned a trade. What were you learning at Bosey's? Refrigerator repair? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, be I honest. Re I was going for commercial photography. Oh, commercial photography. And I hadn't taken one picture there. Yeah. yeah. You should I see am the, the pictures you take. No, wait a second. I am the official photographer of the Howard Stern. No, you are the official photographer of my feet for the Howard Stern, <laughs> so which is all you seem to capture. <laughs> Bosey's, uh, my friends, nicely call idiot school. Bosey's is a, is a vocational school, and when you're in Imagine high school... this is a lecture. Um, you can do half your... What is it, John? I was just going to say, this intro of what he did before you... Yeah. Last for about 45 minutes. Oh, oh really? God. Oh, he goes through his record store work. He goes through his um, <laughs> he, he goes through his job at Hula Hands. And oh how my he, and God! And how he stayed out late and went drinking after we after work. John, you're taking it all out of context. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's talking about all the stuff that are people sleeping. Well, yeah, I, I wanted to tell Gary, you know, off the air that this part should only have been 10 minutes. No, no, he, and, and John's right. This part went a little long. I, have, yeah, I mean, no one, Gary, did it. everyone in their life has done that. No, it was the first time I ever did it. John's right. It went a little long. Read my book. I don't talk about being, a, you know, a camp counselor. Hey, everybody doesn't get everything right the first time. <laughs> but, Gary, if you're going to talk about how, I mean, Bosey didn't get you to Nobody invited you into this conversation, Robin. I remember that. <laughs> Bosey didn't get She's you She's invited as long as she got a microphone open. <laughs> so Gary basically experimented at $40 a head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, at least I experimented a little bit more than you got, you moron. You experimented for free. <laughs> <laughs> how many people know Bosey? <laughs> right, Jackie? Yeah, I admit it. I admit it. I, 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 didn't didn't know, I didn't know what to do, and, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do, so I just went and gave it a try. So I mean, know, words, I knew, you didn't I feel it. comfortable uh, taking, taking the, money for something you didn't I know you were no going to do. I had no idea what I was going to do. All right, so fair just, enough. So Jackie just let the learning annex take it, and he got nothing out of it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that was very, I, Good I work. Know, honorable. Good work. You sell those T-shirts after the show? Come on, be honest. No. You liar. 
day at your home school, and then you can do the, your other half a uh, day at this vocational school. And most of the majors there are like um, his, his his credits are high school. No, you know what? This is a, a lecture to help you get into Bosey. I, I know. <laughs> I learned more about Bosey's than, than what he does at the Howard Stern show. He's a recruiter. <laughs> Bosey's is for anyone around the country. Bosey's is for idiots. There's no disputing. <laughs> when your parents even bother to tell you to come all the time. When you have to go home and your guidance counselor has told you to tell your parents you're suitable for Bosey's, oh. that's like saying to your parents your genetics are you, you come from sewer rats. You're close to retard. You're close to retard. You're as close to retard without actually be putting into a retard school. I learned two things equally at Bosey's. One of them yeah. was how to make pictures, and the other one was how to do bong hits. Right. You were allowed to smoke in class. So what does he talk about at the record store? Does he list the actual records he sold? <laughs> he, he really gets pretty descriptive about his job. Oh, wait, i got to go oh, on with this. Wait, wait a second. Gary Puppet wants to say something. See, I used to stock Loverboy and Brian Adams records. Oh, before we go too far, I'd like to go a little bit back and a little bit more. At 8, I had a paper route. At 9, I finally stopped wetting my bed. <laughs> and at 10, I had my first Italian eye. Whoopee. <laughs> at, at one point, he goes, well, see, on one of my jobs, I was the token idiot. I said, well, what, well, I guess nothing's changed. <laughs> I think that's every job. John was like out there heckling me, you know, every once in a while. But Gary, it's amazing. I mean, this is some lecture. We're learning about BOCES. Well, we're learning about how... And air conditioning. Uh, um, auto body. I guess this is to say, hey, now I'm a big success, but I had to start out yeah, humble Yeah, people beginning. didn't have much hope for me. Right. Look at this. And look at the, wait, wait a second. And look at the star I am now. Wait a second. Hold on a second. Now, yeah. I get own horn. I got to explain something this right now. This is Horatio Algae. I did not get... Yeah. Wait a second. Horatio <laughs> Algae. Look at my teeth. <laughs> no, wait, I got to make... The so funny thing is, he's not a success now. <laughs> wait a second. You know, I was even talking, you know, I have problems with Gary because sometimes <laughs> it's hard to get through to him about what he has to do with his real job, which yeah. is office work. Yeah. And Gary's problem is he believes he's a celebrity now. He's very hard to deal with. Oh dear! That's not he's true. Got an attitude oh, absolutely. Problem. It's not an attitude, but some some things I think he thinks are beneath him because uh, he's like, a celebrity. Like what? No, but I'm not a celebrity. No, you're hard, you, you're, you really trust me. You don't see it in yourself. So you know. It's Luckily, like, I have you to see it. But my, my problem is, I you know what it is. If he was an office worker, right? Yeah. And I never put him on the air. He, you know, you'd say to him, "Look, I can't use you anymore. You're not, you're not performing in an office way, and that'd be the end of it." Uh -huh. <clears throat> or maybe he would perform better. Right, but everyone here thinks they're a star because they're on the radio and they feel they're indispensable. In other words, how can you get rid of me? I'm Baba Booey yes, from the radio, right. and it's 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 very hard to get them to do their office work, which is what I'm really after with them. Like John's a celebrity, and Gary, and Baba Fooey, and <laughs> this one, and I really, you know, I really never. Planned, planned on that. Yeah. So every time I try to hire someone to actually do office work, they end up getting on the radio, and then they're ruined. Say. So, <laughs> okay, I, I have now one. He, I guess he thinks that everything about him must be much more interesting. Then that's yeah. why he's talking so long about. Bob. Well, he's a celebrity. He, he, I mean, in other words, people will be fascinated to learn his his humble beginnings. One yeah. small he's a point celebrity. Point. Wait a second. Wait. I mean, it does go to a guy's head when 130 people show up to see. At 30 bucks a head. Yeah. To learn about how you rose to the top. See, I, guess so. I went from nothing to nothing. <laughs> but see, you know what? Here's the lecture you really should give. Here's the lecture. Gary was going nowhere fast. What happened was, when I got to NBC, they'd only give you $150 a week yeah. for someone to call a producer. They, they didn't care what you called it. I just said, I need someone to... It was to, a gopher. I need someone to get food for me. Yeah. So, I said, how, how who am I going to get? <laughs> the guy, the, the janitor at NBC made 30000 a year. Hey, wait a second. I beat out somebody for this job. Who? I don't know, some scary guy in the newsroom. Some <laughs> really? Yes. All right. I did be, Brett, but I needed a moron. And, and I, was. I said to them, please, can't you give me more than 150 a week so I can get somebody besides a moron? So they said, here's a guy you from Bosey's. <laughs> they didn't tell you from Bosey's. You didn't yes, know. Yes, I, I did. No, you didn't know. You know you didn't so know. So I, I, I said, well, he qualifies. <laughs> I mean, what do, you, what do you want from me? I didn't even interview him. Fred did. <laughs> Wait a second. I do. Can I just make so one then I went, Can I make a point? He showed up in his suit. Uh, well, that's because Fred told him. And Fred, Fred told started him. goofing on him right away. Fred told him to wear a suit, and then Fred goofed on him. <laughs> and then he said, okay, so let's let this guy get our food. Yeah. And, and I'm down. a very loyal person. I Listen, I can't fire him. Mm -hmm. But he really isn't qualified. Howard, can I make one very small point? And now he's giving lectures. Please, on. please. There is no other job in the world like this one. Don't go to see him just, talk. Just one small point. Yeah. Really a, a tiny point. When I was in high school, yes. I wanted to be a photographer, and both yes. had a photography program. Here we go again. I, I, the same I, listen, listen, I'm making a point. I heard this last I, night. Shush. <laughs> I did not. Do we have to pay money for this? 
I did not get yeah, sent. Yeah, 40 bucks. Will you shut up? I did not get sent to both these. I went there about Gary. Terribly. Oh, I'm trying to talk, you moron. Oh, yeah, you mean you chose mostly. I want. They had a good program for photography. I did not get sent there. I picked Don't want to hit me while I'm embarrassing Aaron. myself. <laughs> yeah, he, goes, he goes. Most of the idiots went to Bosies, but mine, in, in case, yeah. Was, yeah, was, uh, I chose the to go. Five photography students were geniuses. <laughs> well, you couldn't. You couldn't get a good photography course at your local high school. And they you had couldn't a, pick up picture had a, taking anywhere else. Yeah, it's really oh, hard. That's where you could go. You, you buy a Kodak and you aim it at something. You know, most of the people you see taking pictures didn't take any courses they, at all. They had a great program at Bosies for photography. It was refrigeration and air conditioning. Here's my life. Eeny, meeny, what's next? <laughs> uh, most of the women there go for cosmetology. You know, it's really, it, it's really a dumping ground for kids in schools that the guidance counselors can't figure out what to do with and they want to get rid of them. That wasn't me. Uh, I actually went there on my own accord because I wanted to go into commercial <laughs> photography and they had a great commercial photo course. Uh, I went to a dump. <laughs> on my own I went on my own accord. <laughs> Well, now that you guys put it that way, it's just that sort of goofy. Now Gary voluntarily went to idiot school. <laughs> this one is a story about 50 ways to rank your mother. Now, why are you talking about my the embarrassments in my career? Why? No, no, no. It was a story. Why are you that, talking it was, about it? was actually it? about how I reacted to it the first time I'd seen it. I told you the story before, but you're going to oh, pretend I didn't. Oh, please. I don't care if I've heard this story before. Don't talk about me. Talk about you. I still don't know how you got here. <laughs> On my own accord. Yeah, shame is it Didn't I tell you that? All right, let me go. Let me go to. Should have dubbed the whole hula hands rap too. That was. Yeah, where is the hula hands rap, Scott? Can you get me that one? <laughs> TGI Fridays. Oh, TGI Fridays. He does a whole rap about oh, being a waiter. At John, you are so stupid. You didn't know the difference between TGI Fridays <laughs> and <laughs> hula hands. <laughs> yeah, to make the burgers differently. <laughs> don't you pay attention to the lecture? <laughs> There's a test. I want to hear Gary talking about what he does daily. I want to know why John's so mean. I'm not mean. I just I was I was. You can't wait to get in here. No, because I, I I spoke to your management at the show. I said you guys got to tell him you got to chill on this rap. What management? You guys got three managers. Who's his manager? What? You got Mo Larry and Curly. Gary has management. Yeah, Gary's got three managers. Well, who is your manager? Some guys. Some what guys. are you talking about, managers? I got guys that manage me. <laughs> and they get a cut of the action? Yes. <laughs> they book my appearances. Get them on the phone. Man. You don't want to talk to them. So you went up and you, you, talk talk to, to, you talked to the management? Yeah, because I, I noticed it was kind of dying around here. I said, guys, you got to like tell them to just well, chill. Well, what else is he going to talk about? No, no, no. But no just, I, I was John, gonna, overall, how, how would you say that? It was good, but overall. This, this should have been right. five minutes long. Okay, you're right. And so, this went for an hour. No, it, John's wrong. It didn't go for an hour because we started at 640. Well, let's hear what it you do go, for a little bit. Let's hear what you're talking about your job. That's what I. That's all I'm interested in. I want to know what yeah, you're doing. Actually, actually the rapper, how, before I met you, went for about 15 or 20 minutes, and then I talked a lot about what happened when I met Howard. But uh, most of it was about Bosey's. Well, hey, that was a big... If you think about it, what did he do before me? He went to Bosey's. Wait a second, about, what about Adelphi? He was telling them how he met you. <laughs> Gary, it's not an impressive career. You went to college. You paid someone to babysit you. Sure. That's your career. And I talked about... And then you got hired by me to go get coffee. I talked about the internships I did before I met you, how they helped right. me along. Okay, all right. Let me, let, me hear what's, let me hear what you do. I don't even care about any of this. I'm just waiting to hear what you do here. Actually, I, I, can, I can already tell you... This is what I'd have been that this is, I think I really breezed through this quickly. <laughs> All right. This, isn't a, this is a really bad piece of tape for me. Well, this is what everyone went to the learning annex to, to hear. Out. And that you breeze through. Both oh, no, no, pieces, no. 25 minutes. <laughs> oh, this is where you go for photography. You got your, <laughs> it was a bump. Oh, you got it was your a twist dump. it all. I chose to go there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough room. <laughs> A lot of people say, Gary, what do you do? Oh. Howard says, what do I do? What do you do? Not a lot of people, just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say it so often. A lot of people say. <laughs> it sounds like a stampede. <laughs> <Gary> says, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I say it so much. People think I was that's a lot of people saying it. I was laying in Gary bed. gets confused. <laughs> I was laying in bed last night going, what do I do? <laughs> uh, or just pull out chair. Then I worked at Crazy Eddie's, and he was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> My day. My day starts like this. I uh, I, have up. Up. I have a we're little bread. We're your... gonna get up. I get up. I, I get, get up. up. I swear to God, that's what I said. I take a shower and then I get brainwashed. <laughs> <laughs> Can I leave? You don't no, know. You're... it's fun to do it in front of your face. <laughs> Unlike other people, I'm not a backstabber. Oops, I forgot the brush again. <laughs> By the not... way, let me tell you one thing. My breath is so bad, even the people on the phone hang up when I talk to them. <laughs> My day starts like this. I uh, have just recently moved out of the city. So now I get up at about 4.25 in the morning, which oh. is an ungodly hour. Um, ungodly. On my own accord. 
<laughs> leave my house about 10 to 5. Hmm. I'm on the court. I'm at K-Rock by 5.30, and then we start prepping for the show. 5.30? I've yet to see you here at 5.30. Every morning. So, uh, my in, a lot of the interns are in already. Uh, Steve Gorilla is in, and he um, helps get the show set up. And there's a lot of setup that's involved. It's <laughs> People who work for free beat me to work. I know. <laughs> I'll drive myself to work. I think. <laughs> hey, that's hard work. Hey, man, so far, all I've heard that he's done is that other people show up. Yeah. So far, he gets up. Yeah. <laughs> and it's that's ungodly. That's the hardest thing I you get up. Say. I get up, and then I come in, and Steve and Gorilla then I sets come up in and sets up the studio. So Steve should be up here getting $40. A lot of the interns are already there. In other words, Gorilla does more yeah. than Gary already. I come yeah. in to make sure Gorilla did some work. <laughs> Chairs there? Very good, Steve. All Thank 20, you. Uh, you got there, it's so much easier not looking at you. <laughs> you got to see the face. It's so much easier not looking at you. Both 425, ungodly. I I just moved out of the city. That means I have to get up at 425. What time were you getting up before? I think, I'm surprised you get didn't get that. Get away from me, you camera. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot there's a camera on him. He thinks I can't see him. Damn. Get away from me, I you have camera. city hours and I have country hours. Now I have to drive. <laughs> I think. <laughs> what time? What time did you used to get up? You didn't, you didn't say, why don't you reveal something you didn't give in a lecture? What's that? What time did you get up when you lived in the city? About quarter after five. And now you get up at 425. Right. Was quarter after five an ungodly hour? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so not as, not as ungodly. And I did get up at my own accord at quarter after five as well. What time do you get up, Gary Puppet? As soon as I get taken out of the bag. Well, it depends. Am I in the city or am I in the country? <laughs> Well, I guess... <laughs> Could you call Connecticut? Because I moved, and they have to change the little sign that says the population. <laughs> <laughs> Add one. <laughs> I'm waiting for my number. My population <laughs> hasn't shifted. <laughs> oh, Add Mary, too. <laughs> and our baby. And our little baby boo. It's really tedious stuff. Uh, you know, we're on in 18 different markets, and every market has to know what commercials are going to be run that day so they can follow along. Howard likes the studios. What does Gary have to do with so that? So far, nothing. So what far, is he doing? He, he's, he's vamping until he gets to what he does. Uh, he, That's true. He's trying to make it look long. Right. You know, there's an 18 markets and a lot of commercials. It's really tedious stuff. I what? gave that to you Kathy to do. do All the stuff. tedious stuff Kathy's doing. Set up just so, you know, we have our own sets of headphones, we have our own chairs that we like to use. Uh, everything's going to be set up in a way we, you know, we block out. Do you do the setup? No. No, but I oversee it. <laughs> and make sure it's done correctly. What is it, Gary Puppet? And now, I'd like to give you the 1975 Yankee lineup. <laughs> <laughs> On first base, <laughs> Chris Chambliss. Um, the windows so that people can't look in, which everybody comes and thinks is really stupid, but you would find it really difficult to work if somebody was staring at you while you were doing your job, and that's what happens. So we like put newspaper over the window. Um, we? We. Like we, we. Who does that, John? A drill, and it's not even newspaper. <laughs> oh, well, that makes a big difference, John. Well, if you're going to be well, accurate. If you did the job, you'd know what but it was. so far, the question was, you said you were going to now tell what you did. John could get everything right except looking at a clock and getting here on time. <laughs> Oh, come on. I was at your thing for three hours. So what are you telling me, Gary? What do you do? Huh? We when, still don't when know do you, what when you do. When do we get to what you do? It's coming up right now. All right, good. Get right, right there. Unless right. Scott cut it off if we're lucky. We just, you know, we do those sort of things. And then the show starts. While the show is on, I open up the mail. I go, I go through Howard's mail and really sift through, because there's a lot of junk in the mail that's not necessary for him to see. There's a lot of stuff that's really good right for the moment. And then I listen to the show, and... <laughs> <laughs> and I listen to the show, and then it's like that's when you hear Howard yelling. Um, he listens to the show. He comes in at 5.30 in the morning to listen to the show. So he does exactly what I thought he did. Yeah. At an ungodly hour. Well, and he does open the mail. Well, he's supposed to open the mail after the show, but he likes to get out of here quick. So yeah. he now does it during the show because there's nothing else to do. No, I like to do it during the show because there are things we can use for that day, that moment. <laughs> But, you know, why, when is the last time he came in with a letter for, that, that needed to that be on the day, air for the moment? Um, day. The day before yesterday, I actually oh, okay. did. I, I did. I came in two days ago with one. Get me the number for McDonald's in Lebanon. You know, I want to call McDonald's in Lebanon or something. And actually, I have a, a radio in my office that is a direct feed because I don't know how many of you people know, but the show is broadcast on delay. What we're doing, you're hearing around 70 seconds later. Oh. Um, I, All right, I can't, this is the most boring. Yeah, it's boring for you. It is boring. Well, because you know it. I know it. I wonder if you told him about the time you're supposed to get the librarian's number and you asked him if he tried information. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop. Yeah. It, Gar Gary doesn't tell you about his failures. So that would be interesting. Part of my job is to look up numbers if Howard needs a number. <laughs> so what I did was 
How is a number four librarian? So, uh... You don't need me for this part. I uh, got a private detective, and they the couldn't paper. find her. No, I can't I believe that. And then I called, called CNN, and they couldn't find her. So for two days, I'm waiting to get the number for this Westerco. And he goes, I called the newspaper. I got a direct... I got <laughs> a direct... the reporter doesn't want to give me the number. But we're arguing Man. about it. So we say to Gary, maybe you should just ask the operator if she's listed. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you're going to die of a heart attack if you laugh any harder. <laughs> Yeah. So what we learned... Did you tell him that story? Uh, I, you know, no, but can I take this tape and bring it to Be the next... Be cool, Wolf. All right. Anyway, very well, good. What we learned is Gary listens to the show. That's well, interesting. All right. Well, listen, I got it. Gary, congratulations on your learning annex appearance. Thank you. And thank you for setting me up again, as usual. Appreciate it. All right. I'd love to toot my horn some more, but I think my battery is dead. <laughs> all right, Gary Puppet. Thank you. Good to see you, too, as well. Haven't seen you in a couple of days. And Jackie Puppet sort of <laughs> taking the uh, wind out of your sails. I don't know. I always hate Jackie. Sure, laugh it up, you big puppet head. <laughs> Jackie Puppet and Gary Puppet, you angry with one another. Yeah, loggerheads. But of our own accord, Gary Puppet has an appearance. Oh, he does? Where is Gary Puppet appearing? Uh, a week from tomorrow. It's going to be a top appliance in Long Island City. Where's Try Jack not to lose me this time. No, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, where's Jackie Puppet going to be? I, don't, I haven't let him work yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, did, he wants too much money. Oh, you pick up Jackie Puppet, his arms fall off. Jackie Puppet hasn't asked Nancy whether he's getting enough money yet. All right, very good. Okay, congratulations, Papa Pooey. Is that all Pooey. Of the uh, learning annex uh, lecture? Sound like a great. Well, there's plenty more, but I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Unless there's something that I should be hearing. Do you know of any? Uh, uh, a rap? lot of it's visual. Like Gary had these tapes, but he didn't take time to edit them. So he'd play these tapes, and then like the commercial. So, you know, the so, so you sat there and watched my TV show, and then commercials would come on. <laughs> yeah, commercials come on, and he goes, "Grill, turn it off." Oh. Oh, and then man. and then he does the tape of my interviews and like the no, tape no, John, quality was all like that wasn't the tape that wasn't the tape it was a machine what is it Ganji well we do have tape of uh, like Gary's uh, opinion on like Robin and oh well I'd know, like, like to hear that a little Q and A yeah oh little Q and A oh, Q &A. Q &A. I'd like to hear maybe oh. does everyone want to hear that sure yeah, yeah that sure. was actually good because Gary's yeah. interviews are usually like th three minutes long yeah I mean they could be just yes or no <laughs> yeah right he people just goes on and on people aren't paying to hear yes or no they want to hear about the show. John, could you do it? I don't know. I wouldn't want to do this. So. Could you, though? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I mean, look. What, what, I, could, I, I can't tell that I... You can bore people I, for two I, hours. I can tell them I used to drive a truck for wholesale tire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the, reason, the reason we didn't pull all that, that rap about him working at, at Fridays and stuff, it was so boring. We sat back there and we're going, you know, should we pull it? You know, we could pull it to show how boring it was, but we're like, oh, it's just too boring. <laughs> yeah, if it's boring, are people going to sit and listen to it? Right. How long did he talk about how you know how he worked at TGIF? Uh, Probably about twenty minutes. No, not at TGIF, no, how, but all those. How long together. did he talk? That that whole rap from his all his boring jobs is at least like twenty minutes to a half hour. It was just so boring. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came in around five thirty, and the bus boys were putting the plates on the tables, <laughs> and then I watched as they made the coleslaw. It was quite fascinating, but I knew it wasn't for me. I had to move on. <laughs> Great photography education he got. Yeah. He never used it. I didn't do anything with it. Well, he explains how Adelphi told him to take communications, and right. that was they it. recognize great potential in him. <laughs> Adelphi. Well, there must have been more money for the course. At one spot, I think on the tape that you have, it talks about how he first came in contact with you—not contact, but he saw your record album. Right. Yes. At the at uh, at wherever he the record store he was working, and his opinion of you. Yes. When he first saw the record. I see. Yeah, I thought you were a jerk. I looked at the picture and I thought it was stupid. I didn't know who you were. Oh, I see. He used a little stronger language than jerk. Oh, did he? What did he say? Ass. Yeah, I th but I told you that story before. I've never. How can you judge anybody? Well, I was younger. You're with stupid. your background. Now I'm old and stupid. Both I mean, while he's moving the albums. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's making sure it's in alphabetical order. He's got an opinion of every yeah. album he has to lug. This guy's an idiot. <laughs> this guy's a jerk. Now let's see. His last name is Stern, so that would go after hmm after, what <laughs> after Janis Joplin <laughs> after Slaw. <laughs> no, that was the other place I worked. <laughs> By the way, which is the coal and which is the slaw? <laughs> I'm in the loop. <laughs> huh. is, if he's a disc jockey, do I put him with rock groups? Or do I put him in his own category? I think he might go with spoken word. word. Yeah, is this spoken word or... I'll put him right after Isaac. Or is this music? Hey, this guy looks like a real ass. But if there were no albums, I'd have no job. <laughs> Maybe he should be an A. <laughs> for Thank ass. God. Yeah. Thank God for asses on the album, so I'll be out of work. Right. 
More asses, more albums to catalog. <laughs> All right, very good. Congratulations on a great Thank speech. You. I'm sure a lot of people. If you, Ganges, if, if anything good back there, quickly bring it in to me because. Oh, TGI Friday rap. That's a good one. TGA, TJ, TGIF, yeah. whatever that is. TGI Friday. I, I never even been to one. Is that what that means? <laughs> <laughs> you mean you worked at TGIF, Gary Puffett, and you didn't know what it meant? Bah. You, ha you thought it was just initials? Yeah. I see. I thought oh. TGI was a guy. Yeah. I thought it was the guy who owned the place, you know? TGIF. <laughs> I used to go up. <laughs> you used to actually call the place to goof? <laughs> to gif. And my mom called it. <laughs> <laughs> I come home from a very hard day of pushing around coleslaw, and my mom will say, Hi, Baba Booey. How to go at. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Mom, you screwed it up again. It's too. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back right after these words. I've just about had it with this Baba Booey tape because we have to call uh, Ray Liotta's ex-girlfriend. We got her number. Oh, we did. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. But uh, I wanted to see if there's... Hold on. <coughs> oh, bless. Yeah. <sighs> bless you. some snot out of my nose. I'm sorry. Here a tissue. Oh, here's a tissue. You just... just... Let that go, huh? I don't know how to hold it back. I, I no, really... I meant you didn't grab a tissue no. in preparation. No, here, I, I got a little mess on my hand. <laughs> I caught it right in my hand. What's the difference? Ugh. I love my hand. I catch everything in my hand. All bodily fluids. And then you what? You go touch other people? Yeah. Oh. I don't care what happens to them. <laughs> I don't care what happens to me. That's why I don't touch other people. I know what I do. <laughs> I'm sure they're doing worse. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, okay, you want to hear Gary's Q&A real fast? This yes. is Gary at the Learning Annex last night explaining stuff like what he does. And these are people asking him questions. <laughs> this is somebody asked about his relationship with uh, Robin. I, I don't know what this is. I'll see if, if it's no good. I'll just yeah, blow out of it. There's some guy who wants to yell at me real quick. So, oh, what is that? Oh, I know what that is. I don't know what, what real I've got. Nobody talks. What we're going to do now is we're just going to open it up for uh, questions and answers. You know, see if anybody has any questions. That you want to ask myself? Supposedly he talked for an hour and a half before he opened it up to our questions and answers, and the question, the the hour and a half was all about his, you know, his boses and right, his background. Yeah. Or stuttering John, or if there's anybody else in the audience want to ask, um, let's start with you. Okay. Um, when Robin was right, interviewing for her book, she said that you and she had bonded. And what I want to know is, what did you two of you talk about, and what is the nature of your relationship? Okay, the nature of our relationship is I, I liken it a lot to a brother and a sister. She's like a sister to me. We fight like a brother and a sister do. Sometimes she pisses Normal. me off so much, I might say, I hate that bitch. But if you said, Robert's a bitch, I would be like, you can't call her a bitch. I can call her a bitch because she's my sister. I would defend her to the death. We've had our ups and downs in the past, but we get along pretty good now. I mean, when, you know, when... She screws with me on the air. It really does piss me off. And when I say those things at that moment, I really do mean them. But um, we get along very well. And it really is the show. <laughs> that sounds like you get along real well. You fight all the time. <laughs> but we love it. <laughs> but he will defend you if someone else picks on you. To the death. To the death. To the death. To the deaf people, I will fight tooth and nail and tooth. <laughs> Most of tooth. Well, as long as he fights with me, uh, fights for me tooth, I'll be covered. <laughs> I would, I would give up my teeth for Robin. <laughs> well, at least half a tooth. In general, it's a lot like a family. You know, Howard's the father. Robin's sort of like the mother or the older sister. And Gary's the monkey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's the pet. Gary's the pet. I'm the mascot. <laughs> let's find that. Let's see. You're the mommy. I'm the to Gary. I'm the daddy. That's just what I need. <laughs> Jackie's the drunk uncle. Friends, friends, he's the Martian in the family. But um, what happened was w w Robin and I. <laughs> I'm so scared, boss. I didn't know what to say about Fred. <laughs> I'm afraid. So I'll call him the Martian. I had some really brutal, brutal, like not even amusing fights some years ago. And we never really talked about them. And during this interview session for the book, we talked about them. And we ironed out a lot of stuff. And Robin, that's what Robin's book is going to be about. Uh, right <laughs> Fighting with Gary. <laughs> Different fights with Gary. <laughs> Round two. Do you want to hear him answer a question about his sleeping habits? Yes. <laughs> Are you really fascinated by this? <laughs> You're having too much fun. I love Gary. <laughs> Gary's an amusement to me. Every night about 10 o'clock, and then you have to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and you work in the morning. How do you... 
I took a nap. I took I, I took a nap. <laughs> Gary, how do you how do you keep up with that demanding schedule? You, you got to understand something. It doesn't matter that Gary gets a little sleep because Gary could nap all day long. Yeah, Forrest Delabate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right here. Nap. I took I I took a nap this afternoon, and you and you learn. You learn you to learn. live on less sleep, and you learn how to, you know, I couldn't do three of these in a week. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get a, a minimal amount of sleep tomorrow. I'll leave, you know, leave work tomorrow. And then actually I have an appearance tomorrow night with John Bobbitt at the... So in other words, he's dopey for his job. Absolutely. Yeah. He'll be so tired that... He saved himself for this. Yeah. In other words, he slept all afternoon instead of being here working. Yeah. Yeah, these personal appearances are doing me a lot of good. Also... Sorry, Gary Puppet. Also, to prepare for tonight... I've been resting my brain since 1979. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll go home and catch some sleep. He's always catching sleep on my no, time. I don't take any drugs. I swear to God, I'm drug free. Do, do you have any, sir? <laughs> Stuttering John. Such Piping a in. cool guy. Short, and you're probably asking me, who's the real Howard Stern? The guy in the radio or the guy off the radio? Is that sort of the question? <laughs> How would he know? I, I, <laughs> that was a good reaction. <laughs> it's a, you know what? It's a commonly asked question. And, and the answer to me is very simple. It's got to be, the person on the air has to be an extension of something that's going on in Howard's mind. Um, oh, oh, a psychologist. Mm, Gary's uh, in-depth analysis mm. of Howard's film. Well, I did go to both seas. I have some credentials I to analyze. I photography course. He's probably listen. We all have thoughts in our mind that we're not allowed to 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 bring out in real life, or that we suppress because you know we get our asses kicked or whatever. Howard is one of those guys who's found. Not only is he lucky enough to let those thoughts out, he's getting paid damn good money to do it. Well, I'm lucky. I'm lucky to get these thoughts out. And I'm still waiting for my first thought. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have them, but I know when I get one, it'll I be a good one. Caught one yet, <laughs> Jerry? Jerry Puppet, you're waiting for your first good thought? <laughs> for my first good thought, and I want big bucks. <laughs> you think I'm missing my thoughts when I'm sleeping? No. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> he, he, has a, he gets to say what he wants. He's damn lucky. That's right. I'll catch it like I can't sleep. <laughs> Everything to Gary is luck. No such thing as hard work. Well, he was lucky. Yeah. He found you. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way... I believe he is an extension of his personality. <laughs> Voss won the lottery. He's just I think, lucky. I think Howard is an extension of the thoughts in his mind. Gary looks at me as a guy like who wins the lottery. Mm. You know, hey, you won the lottery. He we won. all have these thoughts. Right. It's just Howard is lucky enough to get to express them. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And my thoughts sure. are an extension of my teeth. Yeah, and that just happened through luck, you know, that I got to express them. I'm sure I have these thoughts. Too. Yeah, I, I know I have thoughts, but nobody have, wants to hear them. I have the same thoughts. I just haven't found my five-leaf clover yet. <laughs> <laughs>